Welcome back to Subiac Ovals. We're ready to go on this derby on Friday night football. The umpires are wearing the heritage gear as well. Interesting to see the boundary umpires wearing the white colours, which will clash absolutely with the Fremantle Dockers tonight. The field umpires tonight are Michael Vozzo, Stephen McBurney, that's the man on screen who will open proceedings, and Troy Pennell as we welcome it. A bit of fisticuffs to start things. Who better to talk about it than Dermot Brereton? <laughs> welcome, welcome, Derm. Uh, good evening, all. We're going to get a heritage style of football because of the weather on this heritage round tonight, one would think. And a big welcome to the man from the West, the number one caller in the caper, Dennis Committee. Welcome aboard, Den. Yeah, thanks, Ed. It's like a sprinkler roster, isn't it? Friday night, it rains here in Perth. Yep. Any going on, too. We're a pundit's gone forward for the West Coast Eagles early, and that means Troy Cook's going to pick him up. So that's the first big surprise move. Tony Jones boundary side as we get set to go. Tony? Very quickly, Ed, that's what the best of field's playing for tonight. It's the Ross Glen Denning medal. Tell you more about that a little later on. Away we go. Sandlins knocks it down. Stendlin gets a hand pass away. The kick from Judd inside the forward 50. Link sliding attempt at the mark. Missed it. Knocks it back through his legs and is penalised for a throw. Bill Matera. None of the Eagles side tonight. Walker. As a result, their forward line will be under pressure. Can they kick enough goals to win? Donkeys have won their last five. Never in the club's history have they won six in a row. Pavlich, the target for Walkie's kick. It spills off hands and goes out of bounds. Good evening to Dr. Peter Larkins. Good morning. Afternoon, Dennis. Yeah, look, just mentioning 3-0 coming in, pretty injury-free. Phil Matera, the big loss, would have been really good to have him out there tonight. May not even get back next week with a groin injury for West Coast. Thanks, Doc. Boundary throw in. <laughs> Sandlin's in front. Good morning to you, Pete. Cox knocks it away from him. Picked up by Fletcher. We've got a whistle. It's coming back, and it will be a free kick to the West Coast Eagles on the outer side. Tyson Stengline's gone to uh, Peter Bell in a big matchup. Josh Carr's running with Kerr. Just very much one-on-one, -on -one, both sides, uh, particularly West Coast, like to go one-on-one -on -one early. Off the ball. Kerr was put down. He's got the free oh, kick. Yeah. Lays it off. Chris Judd settles, kicks towards centre half forward from behind Matthew Carr. In fact, it was Parker who flew over Lynch. Taken down was Hunter. Now an opportunity for Fletcher. Swings it out wide. Nikoski, the ball skids away from him and goes across the boundary line. Throw in left half forward for the West Coast Eagles, who have done all the attacking in the opening going. God has gone on to uh, Cousins at the moment. Not happening off the ball, Eddie, and the umpires are right onto it. Peter Bell's got a free kick against Tyson Stingline. Tyson, Tyson, Crowley might be running with Cousins. Big job, name of Stephen Dodd, the young man. Yep, Cousins. 11 centimetres taller than Cousins. Go forward, with, go defence with him as well, you'd reckon. Whoa, Bell keeps it up in the air a long time. Judd almost was there to cut it off. Off the ground went black with the left foot up towards the half forward flank position. A chance for the Dockers to go inside 50 for the first time. Carr was tripped nearly. Almost said the umpire. Play on. Braun gets it out to Fletcher. Fletcher out to the centre wing position. Judd's already had three possessions. Picks it up beautifully. Gets the handball going. Great play as the Eagles pick it up through Kerr. Well, they don't pick it up through Kerr. In the end, it's picked up by Stingline. The sweeping handball to Judd again. Gary, get excited. Look at that kick up towards full forward. Off the hands. Umpires picked one out. Eagles catch. The footy. You turn your back on the footy and you grab hold of him with two arms around him. There's, There's the that. explanation and Ashley Sampy gets the free kick. Well, what do you reckon, boys? That was 50-50 for mine. He Play kept his eyes on the ball the whole time. The one thing you would notice with that, with Ashley Sampy, when he was picked up by Thornton, he ran straight to the goal square. Well, boys, now, what do you reckon about that? Play on. Play yeah, on. Play on. It's got to be play on. It's too hard play to play. get a goal than to get them handed to you like that in a 50-50 contest. James Walker, Walker is going to get busy on Chris Judd. Just making the point. The umpire said he wasn't watching the football. Well, he certainly was. That one's got pointed. What does it matter? As long as you don't infringe. Well, it's the rationale if you're not watching the footy. But he was watching the footy. Umpire Michael Vazzo for the seventh time on Friday Night Football. Starting with a bit of controversy as Sampy comes in and kicks the goal. He was watching the footy. There was a bit of bomb shaking it, boss, in the way you described that too, Dennis. He was watching it all the way. The one thing you'd have to say, the free kick there or not, it is with interest that you notice that Sampy's taken Thornton straight to the goal square. So they've decided that whoever gets Thornton 
they probably uh, worked out that Sampy would get Thornton. He's going to try and get him one out. Every eagle forward has pulled away to isolate that matchup. There we go again. The high ball coming in. Durham. I don't know where his eyes were if they weren't on the footy. Uh, the young man Thornton, as the umpire explained, Dennis, you're exactly right. Can somebody explain to me why you have to have, have your eyes on the footy? It doesn't matter if you don't infringe. If you, make you don't do it. If you make contact, yeah. That's, well, that's Nonsense. what they're going to hang their hat on. Yeah, it's useless. Car out right of the middle, kicks it down towards half forward. Another so middle. Looking like an honest trader. Across half back, picked up by Glass, who breaks away and drives towards the wing. Hangs a long time in the air. Braun leads back in the race, finds it now. And got through, and he's away, running down towards half four, kicks the space. Champy under the football, loose at the back, where a punter leads in the race. Can Cook get there? Not in time. Perfect start, Dan. Perfect start for the West Coast Eagles. What's well, working, isn't it, with this isolation in the forward line with Sampy and Thornton pushing everybody up? The two times they've gone in deep, they've run the ball to the forward side of the square and the kick has gone long to the, the top of the square and it's run into pretty open space and it's rare to have that in wet weather football. Just on this one quickly, Wirrapunda ran forward at the start of this game, so they're effectively playing a seven-man forward line, the West Coast Eagles, and, uh, well, Freo have gone with him. Troy Cook followed him all the way down. So just a little psychological victory for John Warsnold. He's on the front foot. Eagles are doing it all here at the moment. 16 disposals to five in favour of the Eagles. Two goals to zip. In fact, the Fremantle Dockers yet to go inside their forward 50. Carr tries to get it off the ground. Goes Hazelby up towards that forward 50. Fletcher leads the race for the ball. Goes to ground, then flicks it out wide. Good tap on there by Banfield. His teammate, Glass, picks up close to the boundary line. Kept it going. Stingline now up the line. Chance now for the Eagles as Kerr. Well, holding play on play on Advantage play on. played, paid for the holding as Kerr's kick is a good one. And out comes Lynch and takes the mark. That true half forward flank, Sampy leads back forward. Now he's in the square, one out against Thornton. It's a bomb of a kick in. Sampy's got the sit here. Thornton did well. Off hands with a touch. Yep, Just touch. it was. Fist it through. But even then, you notice for a, what's that ball in the air? Three, three and a half seconds. They still only got the, the the isolated contest. They've made a conscious decision here to try and take Thornton into a dangerous area and expose him if they can. Monday to the outer side, Lynch the strong grab, 65 metres out. And it started sensationally after being so disappointing late last week against the Western Bulldogs. Same again. It's a bumping kick down towards full four. Bounces inside the square, arriving quickly Cousins. To his own advantage, Dodd knocks it away out of bounds, and the umpire says throw it in. The guy dictating this is Quentin Lynch. They know that Park is their preferred fullback, and he's rock solid down there, so Lynch is taking him away and exposing the young man Thornton in the, in the goal square. That's, uh, that is a telling statistic right there, and that's why it's two, two goals, one to nothing. Andrew throwing, Sanders knocks it down, taken by Judd, snaps off the boot of Grover. Did very well. See, they have to hang in here. I mean, in a, in a night like tonight, two goals, two to a clean sheet. They've just got to hang in and not let this get to a four or five goal margin in wet weather. The Dockers need to just steady at the moment. The mark taken by Parker. Game's record holder for the Fremantle Dockers side as Matthew Carr kicks up to Sanderlands. It's the handball game. That's Josh Carr. Mm. Little chip, no 15, the umpire said. Now, Ford 50, no, chopped off by Glass before it could go in. So the Eagles have got it all going at the moment. They've broken to this side of the ground, if you like, the closest side as far as the camera's concerned. Held up now by Braun. So the Dockers have got back, man on man. A bit of a flood in the midfield, Dermot. It's the first time the Dockers in this opening quarter have been able to go man on man. They've been exposed with Eagles, the Eagles hard running forward. They Braun's, just run away from them. Braun's kick wasn't that flash over the line and out of bounds. Throw in. Inside 50s, 5-0 to the West Coast Eagles for a return of two goals, two. And obviously no score to the Dockers. Moments ago, so Ryan Crowley stretching on the bench. Sandilands thumps it down. Walker with pace comes away. Runs beyond the wing. Kicks well inside the forward 50. Over the top. Hunter. Pavlich onto the crumb. Snaps. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Pavlich.
He's a, a superstar, Pavlich. That's the first time they've really been able to attack the goal square. It's good to see Walker, who's got his hands full with Judd, won his own footy, ran his full complement and kicked long to the top of the square. And the great thing about Pavlich and hopefully McFarlane from a throw point of view is they don't just rely on doing it in the air. They're also prepared to be front and square when the need arises. And Hunter took a risk, came off, big spoil. Pavlich was in the beautiful position, good enough to finish. Matthew Pavlich has kicked 33 goals for in his last six weeks. Have a look at this. Left foot balance, snap across the body, right through the middle. Magnificent goal. That's efficiency for the Dockers. One inside 50, one goal. Carr gets it going again. Now the Dockers start to look like they're on the move, but it's cut off by Fletcher. Fletcher just pumps it forward up towards the centre half forward position. They've got the numbers here, the Dockers, except for Cousins who got in the way. Spills out to Bell. Good play. Kept his composure. Long kick up towards the half forward flank position. Out comes Pavlich with murderous intent if he wanted to, but he's a fair play and didn't kill his opponent there, Kerr Dermott. Well, what's he doing? He could have. Good play by Hazelby, but not Hazelby. In fact, right. it was marked there by Anthony Grover. Getting to the front of the pack in front of the Koski. Now it's Cook from the outside of the boot. He kicks it up towards the half-forward flank position. Banfield couldn't hold the chest mark. At the fall of the ball, Hazelby gets it out. Walker's been very busy so far. Dangerous kick forward. Chance now for oh. Longmuir. Couldn't quite get his kick away. And it's conceded by Hunter for a rush behind. The, the same as the West Coast Eagles, you know that Pavlich is doing exceptionally well. They might even be better at the moment. Trying to push Medhurst up the field. I know he's a goal square player, but McFarlane is going to expose Hunter with pace from the goal square. The two best goal kicking opportunities are Pavlich and McFarlane. Stake out, short of the target. Intended for Hunter, marked by Medhurst. 55 metres out, terrible kick. Bounces inside the field of play, a lucky break for the Dockers. Big missed opportunity there. You've got to make them pay the West Coast Eagles there too good. He's been a lot better in recent times, as uh, Paul Medhurst. Had a lot of opportunities, may not have been kicking big bags, but set up plenty. Wonderful run at home for the West Coast Eagles. Boundary throwing in the pocket, Staker goes very high. Schofield leads back. Selwood went down. Medhurst in the grasp. Now Bell, aided by a shepherd from Hazelby, hard against the boundary line, hugs that boundary line with a kick on a wonderful mark by Kerr. One hander in the back pocket. Eagles lead it by seven. Kerr. Gently to Judd, 26 possessions in each of the last two weeks, finding his season's best form towards Cousins, who's been in grand form all season long. God did well against him, though. Heard the voice, got it out to Cook, to McFarlane. High ball, floating, lurking behind down there was Carr, battles with Kerr, picked up by Cox, a wet glass. Judd once more, full chested, breaks away, goes towards the outer side, needed a fist. Mundy did well. Six Got disposals. it across the line. Sorry, Dennis, six disposals to Chris Evan disposals now to Chris Judd. See, how good was Kerr's, uh, not that mark, but Kerr's strength oh, against uh, Carr then, just pushing him away from the footy. And Carr had the uh, box seat on it. Just forward a centre wing towards the Fremantle goal at the moment. Fox goes up, but it's grabbed there by Longmuir. Inside 50. Big push of the body there by Pavlich. Oh. That was a free kick, surely, to Pavlich. He'll get it anyway. Right. Yep, he's too good. No, he didn't get it. Judd knocked it out. Picked up by Glass. Glass to the boundary line. Where the throw in. They are absolutely rolling the dice with Judd at the moment. Uh, Fremantle. I've just watched him, not surprisingly, the last couple of minutes. And uh, gee, if Walker's the man who, who I think it is at the moment, yep. he's giving him an enormous amount of latitude. It's stiff there, uh, Matthew Pavlich. Not to get a couple of free kicks. Off the ground oh, with Fletcher, that. Banfield to Kerr, who's been busy so far. Good kick up to the wing position. Cousins lays it off to Braun. Back to Cousins. On centre wing, he's got a player out wide. If you can see him, he does. That's beautiful vision. Here goes Mitch Morton in game number two. Inside 50 with a kick. He finds Lynch. No, he couldn't quite hold it. Second go at it. What do you think, Dennis? It was close. Parker. For the Fremantle Dockers, a beautiful kick. Car it was, now it spills. The kick forward from Bell up to the forward 50. The Wiz couldn't quite hold onto it. He's got it though. Handball's over the top, wants the one two to work for him. Spinning around. Was Car up towards full forward. Eagles have got the numbers. Magical at one end, and that was a beautiful mark, one handed to Braun. Now a chance for the Eagles. Run around the outer side to Cox, just forward of the wing, and he settles. 
Open forward line. Three men inside the forward 50. Kicks for space. Cousins on the angle. Hard running. Wonderful stuff. Unbelievable work right, Ben Cousins. One into the ground the other. Across the body. Down towards the pocket. Awkward for Braun. Met solidly by Mundy. Loose ball at the back. Sampy had a lost it. Schofield, Mundy. Oops. Fumble now. Cook's in trouble. Kept his head. Thornton. Not sure he kept his. Kicks it straight up in the air. But the mark is taken by Dodd. And he's got players on if he raises his vision right now. No, needs to clear Morton. Morton comes back, one hand up, bounces to Stenglein, to Lynch. He's been very active, feeds it back. Fletcher, Fletcher about 70 metres out, touched off the boot. Wanders down towards full forward, coming up to mid at Monday. He's been good opening this game. Slammed out of there by Schofield. Carr comes in hard on Fletcher. And the ball spills out of bounds. That is the second contest in the air that Matty Carr's gone for in the last 60, 90 seconds. That has been excellent for his team. He forced one up here on the half-forward flank to his teammate, Jeff Farmer, underneath. And that one then just had to make the contest so the Eagles don't win it easily. Green for the West Coast Eagles. Crowley for Fremantle. Into the field. After 15 minutes, Josh Carr having a sit-down. Umpire circling, wants to find a free kick. 2 3 oh guys, if you tried it in. Good luck two, trying to find guys, that out. 2 3 oh guys, it in. That was unbelievable. He <laughs> just wanted, you, you blew it and made a decision. So mad he could spit. Oh. Looked like he, uh, the umpire there, Vosso, just to leave. We had to find a free kick, and then it was a matter of justifying it. Mon uh, the uh, kick forward is a good one, and this man, Morton, will line up for his first goal Take in football. Game kick. number two, let's have a look. Carrigan Cox now. pulled it in under him. <laughs> Clever play. Uh, whatever the decision, uh, it's been made. And the young man down there has been good, David Mundy. He was spectating on that occasion. He allowed Morton behind him to run past him. All he needed to do was turn his head. So Mitch Morton lining up for his first goal in football. Father-son draft pick last year. Ron Grassi medalist for the International Rules in 2004, the under-18 team. He gets his first goal on footy, and the Eagles get their third of the night. Well, I hope we get another look at uh, Derm, the defensive effort in particular. I've really been impressed with David Mundy. They've got big wraps on him here in Fremantle, but he just, uh, for half a second, zoned out. A productive back, but he does like running forward. He's, he's been but fantastic so far. Yeah, You're right, he gets caught out here. He was just standing, watching, guarding space. And that's a good effort from the young man. Big wraps on him as well. Mitch Morton, handy father and son. A couple of interesting decisions, though. Sampy's first. And not holding the ball. And it can't hurt you. It's all about location, location, location. Sort of. Hometown decisions, they do. <laughs> They've had a hard run, the Dockers, so far. Yeah, they've got the rough end of the pineapple. Thrown up in the middle. CB up high. Longview will get the free. Got him in the head. No, you got him in the head. There you go. Longmuir gets the hand pass away. Schofield. They have trouble with those two, but I'm going to shut up. The kick goes down as the attacking 50, and the mark is taken by McFarlane. That's that pace. Towards the pocket, Pavlich, troubled by the lights at least, and oh, he was interfered with his getting the free. Well, that might be the even up. You just put your eyes on him and marking interference all the way. There no ball was collected in that contest. He took the body, watch this, so this is the centre bounce. Oh, well, he's got the eyes on the footy there, That's still made contact on the ball. This one, yeah. takes oh. the eyes off it. No one gets a touch on the footy. Look, whether it is or whether it isn't, I'm just telling you what he's saying is the reason. No one touched the footy. Whether it is or not, the decision's been made. But um, back in the middle, if the other guy chooses not to jump at the ball and you jump... Yeah, I mean, luck. Oh, look, I'm not even going to... I'm trying know, to understand ruck work. They don't even know the other the ruckman. Adledge kicks. He's got his second. He's a goal-kicking machine lately. Well, it's important, I, I think, we don't get caught up in trying to work out what umpires are doing. <laughs> and it, because oh, we will be on. here Why until... Is that important? Well, because we'll be here until tomorrow, and you're not going to change the decision. So this is the game that's important. And uh, the setup intrigues me. The Eagles go with seven forwards. They're happy to have it one-on-one. -on -one, but what it does is it opens up enormous space for Fremantle. You saw McFarlane push up into that space and take a mark. You saw Pavlich work in the space. 
All right, here we go again. Let's see what happens this time. Both uh, both players went for the ball. And a Stingline who tries to get the extraction out there. Good play by Longmuir. Fought hard. Stingline in a second time. Judd's got it. He's wrapped up. Look at that. Oh, have a look at this. But uh, have a look at that. Yeah, good umpire. Just bounce it up. We'll throw it up straight away. Three blokes still couldn't take Chris Judd to the ground there. He's just he's straight through his torso. It was so good. Shepard, Mark. Mark, you went nowhere near the foot. Mark, you weren't even looking at the footy, mate. You ran straight in. Against Nikoski, not CB. Yep, so Nikoski gives away the free kick and Longmuir gets it. For the Shepherd against the Ruckman, up towards the forward 50. Chance here for Jones to get it going out to Kerr, who's been busy, to Banfield, to Braun. Not much on offer, he has to just check his run. Now he looks up to Whip Punda, just over his head. Good play by Staker. Handball's out wide to that man, McCoskey, inside 50 with a kick. It's a 2 on one out comes Lynch. If you'd have a second look at him, you he was running at you. He again. He's a big so. unit. Look at him go. Just wrestling his way through. Good handball came out from Jones to see me. His kick is way off line. And over line out of bounds on the full free kick to be taken by Crowley. Yeah, it is early in the piece, but goals for the Eagles are the thing that's going to be, uh, going to be hard to come by. There's a the free kick. Uh, it was against Stevie. the right of screen. And yeah, Nikoski was the one who came in and affected the hit out. So against Seavey, never ran, ran out the footy. You've got to let them play football. Josh Carr. Oh, Crowley. Short one to Thornton. Matthew Carr is free. It'll go to him now. He's a left half back. Next link in the chain. Who will that be? Pavlich perhaps. Comes at him now, goes in that direction. Pavlich, wonderful pace off the mark, was side by side with his man, and suddenly was five metres in front, kicks inside the forward 50. Opportunity down there for Matters. Well done by Chick, got him to the ground. Play on's the call. Chick is having a wonderful season. Goes again. Medhurst to his own advantage. Not his best effort. Moved at about 10 metres. In comes Fletcher. Met solidly by Medhurst. Down he wins. Fletcher's kick pushing the back. Okay. Free kick to Chad Fletcher, bumps, twice bumps winner the of the Ross Glendening medal. This will be interesting too. Can't argue the way Pavlich has started with two goals. He's playing further up the ground and not as close to goal as he has in recent times. Uh, McFarlane out of the goal square to uh, utilise that pace from the goal square. Mine. Ed Horst has been the man at the minute. Yep. Morton comes up and accepts it. Stay out, stay out, on stay defensive out. 50, no one on the mark, so he can take off and does. Looks up, Staker is his target with the long sleeves. Out he comes, couldn't quite hold it. Did well enough to bring it to the ground. Seavey, very good pick up. Jones over the top. Broad inside, look at this. Jones again on his left foot. Kicks it up towards centre half forward. Out comes Lynch, he's in the back. No, and a hole. Played nothing, doing it. No, there was a hole before the ball arrived. In the meantime, it's the Dockers now through Matthew Carr. Inside 50 goes with a kick, a bit of push and shoving at the back. The mark was taken and was paid to Banfield. He's an interesting player. Fine, yeah, he did take the dive, and the ball wasn't going to get to them anyway. They weren't going to affect the contest. He, he's for a small bloke. He's a goal square player, Medhurst. He, he's flanker size, but can't really play there with greater plumb. Stingline does it beautifully. Found about 30 metres with a kick along the ground. Will Punda comes backwards to Morton. Look at that great play by Young Morton. Caught one in the mush, and he'll get the free kick. Heath Black gave him one there, just to let him know that he's involved in a derby. And he's coming off Heath Black before anything else happens. Just the open hand. That's a tag team. Gangster slap. Bit of a Ligon streak. Slap that one. Derm, bit of a gangster slap. <laughs> We're Punda, round the body. <laughs> he made the tag, Derm, as soon as he hit. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he came off the top of the uh, bunker soon. <laughs> off the turnbuckle. Yes. There's chairs in there, too. There's a chair in there. <laughs> There goes the kick inside the forward 50. McFarlane. He's only, come, fist on it. He's only come to the uh, bunker to get a foreign object, Dennis. That's right. Tony Jones. Uh, Mitch Morton just parading the boundary there, just uh, still feeling his mouth. But uh, the changes off the bench, incidentally, coming thick and fast. The coaches making sure the legs just don't get too tired in these conditions. CB hooks it down goal side. Danger. Well done by Dot a couple of times there. Sliding in with Sampy. Comes out the back, picked up by Jones. Not normally the best kick in the world. Wheels around, he wants this. No, <laughs> slides it towards the opposite pocket. Opportunity for Shammer at the back. Lynch did have a half chance there. He goes again, does Lynch. He's the master of flicking it back through his legs. Down goes Cousins, knocked out of there by Green, taken by Judd, who snaps. 
tight. It's pretty close behind. Gee, it was so unusual when the ball was in front of the points on the close side of, to us. Josh Carr was trying to slap the ball out of Cousins' hands rather than tackle him and take him to the ground. Eighth possession for Chris Judd. That's ugly. And Lars Seavey couldn't quite get to it. And here's Judd again. Make that nine. Nice kick. Just the 15, was it? Yes, so what inside. Beautiful kick. And the mark's been taken by Rowan Jones, who's yet to kick a goal in season 2005. Round 17, his last appearance. And has kicked 47 goals, 38 in his career. I reckon you're going to see a lot of goals for West Coast if they're going to win. Kicked by passing the players leading into the 450 rather than having the guys coming out of the square. Big kick this one for the West Coast Eagles. They lead by eight points. They now lead by 14 as Jones kicks his first of the year. Well, in Lynch, they've gone to Lynch a number of occasions and Parker's done really well. With a lot of space, you'll be able to see the midfielders running into the 50, running in from the middle of the ground. You saw this occasion, Jones goes in from the side. We're only going to see as many coming out of the goal square. Judd's now uh, having a spell off the ball and he's going really deep. Walker going down with him. So they're going to need a couple of goals from Judd and Cousins apiece too, you think. John Worsfold has won four out of seven Western Derby since taking over from Ken Judge. And the Dockers try and load up with an eight-man back line, and John Worsfold puts eight opponents out against them in his own forward line. Sandlins did well down to Carr. Josh Carr boots inside the forward 50, intended for Pavlich, behind Medhurst. Well done by Chick. Worried him out of it, taken high. Banfield will get the free. Advantage is paid. Kerr comes away. Kicks it wide towards the wing. Leading in the race is Jones. Worked out of it by Dodd. Staker, did he get into the back of Grover? In fact, it was the other way around. And the umpire has awarded a free kick to Staker. It's all or nothing when they go forward, the Dockers, because there's only three forwards against three backs. It's a goal or it comes out. Staker. Oh! oh. Wow. Well, wonderful courage by Bell. Judd is hurt. Bell slow to get up. That from Peter Bow is a highlight of this round of footy. Come yeah. on, Ellie, I'm that gonna is... give it a blood roll. Uh, um, look, uh, uh, in normal motion, yeah. I've not thrown it in his back. Yeah, he did, but take he brought the arms give him down. the blood roll, you can take him off. You are allowed to protect yourself. Yeah, you are, and I'm gonna say that's what's gonna get him off this charge. In this climate, he's tucked up. And watch his left arm, he oh. tucks up. Now time. look, I, I agree, I'm in heated agreement with you. Mm. He's in agreement. But he's in agreement. Peter Bell ran him in. But the fact oh, is God. that he pulled the arm down and put, went oh, side on into it. Well, now that's factual. Well, this we we this. both know it's Aussie rules and that should be should be let off. This stuff about goodness. where you're looking at the ball is nonsense. If you're playing tennis and you're looking out in the stand, you can still hit the ball. It doesn't make any How difference. Good. How good was that? How good is that right there? Focus on Listen. that aspect. Yes. Tony Jones. Uh, the, uh, score, the scoreboard taking our feed tonight, Andy. Of course, they've seen the replays and uh, a near riot happening here at the minute. <laughs> Sandlins has got the football, goes across the ground. Here's a chance for Black in his space. Kicks inside the forward 50. Hangs a long time in the air. We're a punter is pushed in the back two. Had some free kicks. Not get a total on it. We're a punter. We'll get the free. That one against Farmer. Yeah, just Farmer, just Farmer and Medhurst in the square. Low, they're just a low percentages. They can do the magic stuff. I reckon they need a Troy Lo a long mule, just a long mule type to contest. 16 free kicks in this quarter in 27, 28 minutes now. Ticked over. 10 to the West Coast, 6 to Fremantle. There's one thing the report where you'd expect that Judd would get off, but a free kick was given there as well. Gary, was it a free kick in the first place? Play on, I would have thought. Play on all day, I would have thought. Anyway, hang on. So, so you think that he's reported and you can't award a free kick without a report? You, you've got to give a free kick. No, no, no I'm not worried about that. I'm just saying it still was a free kick. I mean, they had the ball at the half forward flank. It's a double whack. I yeah. just reckon that bloke there needs a medal. Oh, for oh, Peter Bell was magnificent. Yep. And so too was Judd. I mean, he went straight for the ball. It was exactly. Well, that's why they would get off. It's what you hold to be uh, the ideals oh. of the game, to be perfectly Steady. honest. Anyway, Steady. inside 50. How would you know? What's that? No, I'm just listening to Durham. Oh. He'll get on. There he is. Shut it. 
Touched on the line. He's had two touch on the line tonight. Chris Judd, he's better than a backyard hero, that's for sure. Well, I can't see any difference between Judd's action and the one of Chris Grant that ran into Max Hutchton early on this season. He was attempting to go to the ball and at the last second covered up. Refresh me, what happened there? That was down at uh, Launceston. Almost the identical action. Yeah, what happened? Did you get rubbed out or not? No. Oh. Got a game on here. No, and Max got taken off. He does it every second week though, Max Hutchton. <laughs> Carried off. Not many grounds he hasn't yeah. left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's seen the sky on every ground, and hasn't belly, he? Belly loses nothing by comparison with Absolutely. Max in that last exchange. Absolutely. Fantastic. Over the top, Sandilands knocks it down. That ball does not come out. There he is. He's okay. It seems Judd's okay, so that's very good news. And yeah, that was back in the Wizard Cup era. And uh, the priest in the set, he went the ball, he was charging at the ball, turned on side on. Made contact when the ball was in flight. Cox, away to Braun. Ball at half back. Goes down towards half forward. It pitches just inside the field of play and goes across the line. It will be thrown in. 28 plays, 13, almost quarter time. Friday night football from Subiaco Oval. Rained all afternoon long, but it has stopped. No rain in the game so far. Two of the biggest men in the competition lock up Sandlins and Cox. Hold on. The one touched it. Spring line. Straight up in the air. Over the top, Kerr. He's put himself about Hazelby. His third possession. Peak taken down. Matthew Carr. Wrestled down by Kerr. And it comes to Dodd. Off the ball. Somebody was taken high. Kerr. Okay. We're I'm not reporting you for striking. Mark's here. Daniel. So two okay, reports. I'm reporting you for striking, okay? Where are you going, mate? Give the Dockers a chance to flood back now. No, I don't think he made contact with the chin. He no, got the chest first and it rides up after. You get rubbed out for hitting your shoulder these days, boys. There goes Kerr, down towards the pocket, and the mark is taken by a sliding Jones. It was a legitimate attempt to Shepard initially. Rode up after that, after the initial contact. This is Brett Jones, and we're told he went out of bounds. Uh, our boys have got to get control here. A lot of confused footballers out there at the minute. Well, they've got control of the, the adjudication, the query. What are they saying there? He juggled it across the line? Is that what they're saying? Fox knocks it down. Fletcher trying to go through Kerr. Been very courageous. Hand passes about 15 metres away. Then quickly as Braun. He slides across the boundary line. It will be thrown in. Ah, hit the ground, we're told. No, it didn't. Not, 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 not on that end. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Catch, wasn't it? Uh, Don't talk about the outbound, Gary. Oh, well, she won't know it, did. <laughs> Sandilands that gets it. Here's Black, who was reported just moments ago to the boundary line. Braun's been busy, so too. Fletcher just went it to the spot. Stingline marks and will kick from 55 metres out. Slight angle. They might end up with 13 different goal scorers, West Coast. And that's the thing that Fremantle are going to be, going to be challenged with all night. They've averaged nine goal kickers per game this season. Well, once you just nick inside that forward 50, if you're free, they'll kick it to you. Because in the absence of their big gun forwards, they've just got to pick them off as they become available. Sandlands on mark. Dennis, I know this is your pet hobby. Uh, why does the clock just keep on ticking sometimes in the first quarter? Like, last quarter, that would have been stopped with the time on play. Yes, I don't know yet, particularly when they bounce it. Good kick. Big kick for Stengline oh. and the West Coast Eagles. He slots it through the middle, and the Eagles get their fifth goal right on the siren. Five individual goal kickers, as Gary Lyon said, and as a result, they lead by 21 points at quarter time in an action-packed derby in the first term. It had everything. Chris Judd has been reported. Black has been reported. Crunches, hard, physical contests, controversial umpiring decisions, and five goals, 434 next to the West Coast Eagles. Fremantle 2 1 13. We'll be back for the second term right after this on Friday Night Football. This is AFL on nine.
Welcome back to Friday Night Football. And what a quarter of footy we've had so far. The West Coast, 5-4-34. Fremantle, 2-1-13. Action pack. Reports, goals, bumps, controversy. It's all happening here. Have a look at the disposals. Chris Judd with 10, a report. And he could have had two goals. Both of them touched on the line. Michael Still get Brown low votes in your oh, report. Yes, you can yep. these days, uh, Gary. Um, Braun, Kerr, Stengline. Yeah, the worrying numbers right there, Ed. Look, yep, look exactly. at them. All the midfields for West Coast are up and about, and that is why they are in front. And uh, let's go down to Tony Jones' boundary side. Tony, there's been plenty of action for you to listen in on. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, just as well, the umpires weren't within hearing distance of some of the Eagles officials when they made their way onto the ground because they were filthy, to say the least. Uh, we've spoken to the umpires, just confirming those reports. Judd for rough conduct on Bell and Black for striking uh, Kerr there. The uh, conundrum, I suppose, for the Eagles is if they want to fight that Judd one in person, would he have to make two trips to Melbourne? They do, of course, play Geelong there next week, so they'll have to think long and hard about that. All right, well, of course, it can be withdrawn by the uh, panel. And we'd be telling that to be the case. All right, Dennis, let's get going. The Derby's a ripper. Second term, up goes Cox. Decisively, John picks up where he left off. His 11th possession inside the forward 50. Cousins takes the tumbling mark. About 40 metres out from goal. Pure athleticism got him to the ball. Then I think he's on young, young Dodd, isn't he, Gary? He actually starts from behind him and beats him with pace just to the ball. See, he's come from behind. Oh, he has to go around. He's Cara, moving, was yeah, it? That was amazing. He had dog in the first quarter, Doom, you're right. But he's moving as well as ever. Yep. Cousins. Averaging 26 possessions a game this season. Kicks from 45. Kicks Troy. Straight through the middle. Two pure and simple... What, what do you call it? Awesome talents physically. Yeah, that one there. Expect at some stage tonight to uh, have the favour repaid. You expect to see Cousins out of the middle and Judd marking inside 50. Six individual goal scorers. That, yeah, at the start of this game, we pose the question where are the goals going to come from? Well, they're going to come from about 15 different blokes, why don't you? So goals have been Cousins to Skipper. Let's go down to Dr. Peter Larkin's boundary side. The good news is Peter Bell started in the middle of this quarter. Pretty sore in the upper back from that. He'd also got a crack in the nose and had some bleeding from that, but a little bit of concussion, but he's obviously back out there to clear him. Back in the middle. Play on, play on. Play on. Cox was hit on the back. Bell kicked it out. Banfield to Braun from centre half back swings it wide towards oh, wow. the wing. Well done by Cook. Worked in front of where a punter took the mark. Just well, go back, reset the mark. He appeared to go and find the eagle, did he? Selwood slowed again up. You drag him down all. for no reason. Cook drives inside the forward 50. Punched away by Hunter. Roving the pack at Sparmer. Wants to be a boundary umpire when he grows up. Opportunity for Chick. And there is Medhurst. Down goes Kerr. Chick comes again. And it's going to be a free kick. And it's going to Kerr. Kerr uh, wants to go and he does. They are smashing Fremantle. Make no mistake. They are absolutely smashing him. Should be further ahead. Hunter goes to Stengline. Stengline left half back. Very short. The mark is taken by Cousins. Cousins at left half back. Fox off is very short. That's ignored. He's standing virtually alongside the man on the mark. Comes back towards the middle now and glass with space to run. Comes away from half back, kicks beyond the centre towards half forward. Cook and Wirapunda. Green at the back, got the crumb, got through. 65 metres out, kicks wide. Jones leads in the race. Runs away from here, Mundy, and goes out of bounds. I don't think uh, Chris Connolly would be all that happy with the attack by Shammer then. Well, oh, yeah, four under the head, that'll hurt. Troy Cook. His uh, 28th birthday today. He got a bit of a birthday present with that one as well. 106 disposals, West Coast, 60 to Fremantle, boys. Yeah, 46 more touches, Eddie. And, most, and now free kick the Colts inside forward 50. So they are in dire straits at the moment, getting smashed in the middle of the ground. Five is their top possession winner on the ground. What they, need, they almost need to accept that... I still think that McFarlane and Pavlich are two winners if they get space. Everyone else, they should just play push up into the midfield, try and choke it on the Eagles. It's such a big ground. 
They get space, Kerr, Cousins, Judd. They tear opposition to shreds. They need to choke that midfield. Beautiful kick, Dean Cox. 19 goals, three this season. I want to have another look at that boundary throw in and can somebody tell me why I got the free kick? Gaz is the specialist on ruck work. Okay, 19 goals, three. 43 goals, 19. Oh, there you go, we fixed him. He gets most of his shots close to goal, though. Have a line out of bounds. We might have a look at that throw in again. There you go! Let's have a look at this. They've both got each other. Couldn't see it. He appealed better, Coxie. Boundary throw in. Right full forward. One down. And his best kick. Cox and Sandilands. Sandilands a lung. Sampy did well. Green, Rapunda had it, lost it. Slapped away by Fletcher. Cousins, well done. Great shepherd. Now, will Cousins get a free kick? I think he might. Yeah. Unnecessary, Josh. Working the footy harder, getting in and harder. Fremantle have been reactive for the whole of this game. The players. Look, Josh Garf, he does that. He's got to get some value for money. He just can't just a soft one. Cousins sets it up to about 25 metres out from goal. Grover came hard on Sampy. Mundy knocks towards the boundary line. They're flustered at the moment, the Dockers. It's out of bounds. We're going to throw in 40 plays, 13. I've seen this before, I've got to say. I've seen a few derbies. I've read the book. An illustration of just how bad they're going at the moment. Pavlich to get a kick is 70 metres from the Eagles' goal. Beautiful uh, touch there from Cox. Up to the goal square again for the Eagles. Offhand's Bell. To the, to the uh, rush behind. That's all right. Dr. Peter Larkins. Yeah, Adam Selwood did leave the ground after uh, hitting his head pretty heavily on the ground in that uh, contest with Troy Cook in the second minute. Uh, just a little bit rattled, but it looks like he'll be fine to get back. Thanks, Pete. Pepper and I are there for us. Dr. Peter Larkins. Hazelby and Bell and Carr, they're the blokes who've got to get busy for fr uh, Fremantle. They're just not getting enough of the footy. Three on the inside 50s so far. There's Bell. West Coast Eagles in front in that department. Chance now for the Dockers to go in. Hunter takes it to the boundary line. We'll have a throw. He, he saw the pace then of McFarlane to get to Hunter. If you just give him space there, Luke McFarlane, he's going to make some real problems for Adam Hunter. But every time they go forward, he's running into congestion. Throw in, 60 metres out from the Fremantle goal. Good hit. Great, great hit there by Sandilands. Chick. Now a chance for Medhurst. Acted that. Yep. And uh, on a night like tonight, he's just got to go hard for the ball. It's Casey Green who's kick. Oh, beautiful play by McCoskey. Find some space. Now he gets the handball working to Cousins, who's been magnificent. Broad is all on his own. 50 metres clear. He can go all the way. Broad looks up, lines up the goals from 55. It's long, it's strong, it's touched on the line. Play on. Jones goes in it. Picked up now by Thornton for the Fremantle Dockers. Clears it out to Cook, who marks on the fence at 50. Well, if I was Chris Connolly, I would set the example now and go straight out to Medhurst. Say, come and cool your jets on the boundary now. The rest of the team can't see that type of lacklustre effort. They need someone to hold the ball in, not act in an attempt to win the city. There's Bell. Mundy did very well in the square moments ago. Bell, so courageous in the previous turn. Chris Judd on report. A rough play. Here goes the kick from Matthew Carr. Now towards half four. There's Judd again. Regally, just drifting across, taking the mark. Lynch across the ground, pinpointing it to Fletcher, to Braun. They're running harder, they want it more. Back to Fletcher, runs inside the centre square all the time in the world. Measures the short pass, taken by Glass, not 15. Tackled by Walker, back to Fletcher. Fletcher's kick, touched by Carr, ricochets to Nikoski. Once more, cutting his way through his gut, lines up, deserves a goal, and he's got it. His first. Majestic. Uh, it is just a class above. Seven individual goal scorers, seven goals West Coast. But I want to come back to Jeff Farmer out here at some stage. It was a shocker, wasn't it? Well, you compare it to the effort of Peter Bell, and then you see Jeff Farmer, who didn't run hard enough at Fletcher. And to me, you know, the game might as well stop now. If that is indicative of where Freo are at, 
and he's not like that, Jeff Farmer, but that is a confidence thing that just wasn't good enough. Well, Chris Judd, we just saw the balance and the poise. How's this for us, that boys? Judd, Kirst, Dingline, Braun and Fletcher and Cousins have had as many disposals between them as the entire Fremantle side. That's the story of the game, Ed, right there. The midfielders are tearing Freo apart. Here they go again. Big Quinton Lynch gets involved. Fletcher, another one. Back to Lynch. Now they're playing with all the confidence in the world as Lynch kicks a ball burst into the square. He's kicked another one. Oh, the Eagles are on fire at Subiaco. It's got to be twofold now for the Dockers. They have to just try and shut down the midfield of the West Coast Eagles, leave their forward line totally open and space for their, well, their quicker forwards, quicker than their opposition, but they have to just choke the space of the West Coast Eagles midfield. Because on a night when it's hard to pinpoint the ball with wet weather footy, they're spotting up targets pretty tight, close spaces. Brennan Lynch, 28 goals for the season, including two holes of four against Brisbane round five and Port Adelaide round ten. And they've got the last five in this game. And they're winning these hard balls too, Dennis. Out of the middle. Cox's ruck work was superb. But they're putting their head over the footy. Judd. Out of the middle once more to half forward Cousins. Had it fisted away that time close to the boundary line. It runs out of bounds and will be thrown in. Eight goal scorers. Eight goals. This is the one. This is Jeff Farmer. You compare that to the effort of Peter Bell a little earlier in this game, and he'll be embarrassed by that. He might be a bit gun-shy by running into players a little bit late, too, who've just marked the ball. Well, at half time oh. because of the rules. Chris Conley should say, I don't care if 22 get reported. Go to the footy. That again, taken down that time. Hammerlock always works. Oh, well. Coming out of the pack, though, is Kerr, aided by Cousins, scrambles it towards centre-half forward. Brett Jones slaps it wider. Good tackle applied by Selwood. Shammer gets a hand pass away to Matthew Carr. Under enormous pressure, the Dockers. High ball towards the win. Well done by Glass. Oh, give up now and your best play's yeah. getting out. <laughs> he beat the best of them. Hazelby, who's won three Ross Glendinning medals, just two possessions so far. His cousins again burning. Thinking about the brown light. Perhaps not, but working towards oh, no. it. Towards half forward Grover. Nicely done. The one at Sting hairdo. You should also say that it's Adam <laughs> Selwood doing the job on uh, Paul Hazelby. It's a river, isn't it? Well, if he goes off this, you have to have a letter from Epstein's mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the moment, it's uh, John Warsford laughing like that. Let's play on. The ball spilt free. And that's what the umpire said. Got it right according to Dermot as Crowley gets the handball going. Inside 50, it goes for a rare 4 out of forward for the Dockers. Out comes the Wiz, who needs one here. Didn't quite get there off the ground. There he is, the best player for the Fremantle Dockers. Gets his third goal. He's kicked all of them, in fact. Matthew Pavlich, Dan Tor. Well, well done to Byron Shammer. At least he made a West Coast Eagles player go to ground. Right? And the ball spills free. Hunter's taken out of the contest. He got laser second tackle. There's some positivity in this play. They're all running with the direction of the footy. Jeff Farmer comes out and meets it in better fashion. Pavlis just an, an understanding where the ball's going, what it's doing. What about the wizard? Came sliding out and went down rather quickly. Like Humpty Dumpty with an ear inner infection or a in an ear <laughs> infection. There goes the ball inside the 50. Diving on top of it is Jones. Slides out the back. Bell did well. Out to Carr. And this ball is hand passed directly across the boundary line. And they're getting pinned for deliberate yes. because they've got no targets up here, Dennis. They're all playing in the back half because they're just trying to hold back the floodgates at the moment. But what two players in, four, in their Ford 50. They're back at their discipline best, the Eagles. Look at them just congregating at the 50 metre line. And that leaves space behind them inside the forward 50 for the likes of Staker and Lynch to lead into. Braun to Morton, whose kick has been picked off by Cook. And this is the other area that uh, West Coast have been great. They haven't allowed Freo a loose man out of defence, which they love to get, and then run through the middle of the ground. But look, they're all manned up. Cook, a high up and under to the position, as Gary said, to a flat contest. 
Cox got the punch away. It's good play. Stenglein has been busy as well. Gets it inside 50. Here we go again as Cook goes out. Oh, oh, that's that's Staker. Got the handball out. It might have been 50-50, Dude. Lynch to become the first multiple goal kicker for the West Coast Eagles. Now he goes to Grant Mikoski. Got one in the back. Humpire said play on that occasion. Still play on the Stakers over the top. Shammer for the Dolphins. Magnificent tackle. Green's tackle was a beauty. And Casey Green will line up from 45 metres out directly in front. That is every footballer's worst nightmare. On the ground, your feet are away so you can't kick it and you've got one arm pinned. Great tackle. Green, in his first game since round seven last year, has kicked six goals, six in his 52-game career, and that was pinned all day. Yeah. Oh, I've often wondered what option you have, maybe to hold the ball up in your palm and head it off. It might be that. Yeah, yeah that's right. about the only other appendage you can use. Throw it on his boot. Not on the ground. Hasn't kicked the goal since round seven, 2003. He has now. <laughs> Nine for nine. Nine players, nine goals. We might end up with 22 for the afternoon. I think oh, the, the record is 16 we'll get in set. the one game. Get we'll set. go to the record books and we'll find out. because we're I think we're seven shy of the uh, record amount of players. Who've... Boys, uh, their best, they've got the best spread of individual goal kickers at 9.37 individual goal kickers per game. The best of any club. Yep. So the West Coast Eagles on a Friday night roll. Casey Green, a lead inclusion from long range. 9-5 uh, to 3-1. They are giving us all a timely reminder of why they sit atop the AFL ladder and why they have been premiership favourites for a long time. Lost two of their last three, but in Perth, almost unstoppable. Longview knocks it down. Hazelby trying to slap it out. Stenblind picks it up. Tackled by Bell. Held a long time by Bell. Longmuir feeds it forward, shock it off the ground by Bell. Down inside the forward 50. Back goes Farmer. Farmer is tackled off. Great chase from Braun. Effective the kick. Scrambles it down towards the pocket. Going back down there is Selwood under pressure. Did well at clever hand pass. Braun back towards the middle. Showing the pace. Coming through there was Glass. Down goes Schofield. Last man standing was Banfield. Got a hand pass away to Jones. Jones drives it long towards the attacking 50. Coming up to mid at Grover. Put down. Staker. Grover came back into the contest. Pulled back by Fletcher. Bounces down towards full forward. Loose ball. Crook in trouble. Taken down. CB steps around. Virtually kicks it straight up in the air. Is it a mark? It went 15. Taken by Matthew Carr. Goes inside Frow's forward 50 on the rear occasion. Farmer coming off the ground. On the rear occasion, comes out that quickly. If, if uh, Pavlich doesn't get the footy, it just rebounds. I reckon they need more numbers in their forward half. Black back on for Farmer. Good mark by Selwood. Because crowding up West Coast forward line's not working at the moment. Adam Selwood is 60 metres out. He kicks it to the top of the square. Looking for a big mark here. Sandy couldn't get it off. Jones has got it. He's kicked another one. Good. Jones has become the multiple goal kicker of the night. The unlikely one of the wall, but he's got two. But this is, this is what... I mean, West Coast have been superb, so let's uh, make no mistake about that. But this is not working. They are stacking West Coast forward line, Fremantle. They are stacking it with eight and nine defenders, but it's not working. They've only got three forwards. Every time it goes in their forward line, which hasn't been often, it comes out that quickly unless Matthew Pavlich kicks a goal. They've got to be more competitive in their front half to try and build some pressure. Right now, they are powerless. Chris Connolly, like John Worsfold, became a senior coach in 2002. Neither one has been able to win both derbies in the season. Of course, John Worsfold, a chance tonight, and on track tonight. Down goes Cousins. All up. There's Worsfold. He would be delighted with this. That's the way they've gone about it. They're well under their season average for possession time. Irresistible. They've been so hard and strong. Nikoski touched off the boot. Schofield, a late inclusion, out to Carr hurriedly, but straight to Cousins. He's been in blistering form, gets a hand pass away. The short one comes from Selwood, release is drawn into space from 50 metres out. I don't think Miss will cut it. He's kicked the goal. Well, 
Yeah, eight goal Pat kicker. Tenth goal kicker, 11 goals. Now, Matthew Pavich has walked into the centre circle and he's saying, get the thing out of here. I know, no, you can't put him in there, but Gingos, they are just uh, irrepressible. West Coast, they've got a hunger about them tonight. Yeah, as far as I read it goes, 16 is the most individual goal kickers a team has had in the one game, and they're now sitting on 10 and not at half time yet. That is the great forward line there, Ed. Three forwards. Now, I know it hasn't been in there often, but they either get it the pavage or it comes out 100 miles an hour. I reckon they need more competitive effort in there. Oh, they need to win the ball in the centre. The chant of uh, Eagles. Eagles goes up around Subiaco, and it is all the Eagles that kick the last three goals. And, in fact, two, four, six, eight of the last nine goals of the match to a lead by 52 points. A chance now for Brett Peake of the Fremantle Dockers as he kicks it inside 50, but they've got the numbers back as well. Almost the mark this evening. Hammer gave it out to Whit Hunter. McCoskey to Kerr around the body. It's beautiful football. They've got loose men everywhere. Glass has got it in the back pocket. Decides to go across the other side of the ground to Whit Hunter. A thumping kick. Look at that one, Dennis. Right under the chest. This man, Braun, has had the ball on a string tonight. Has killed them. Jones, Braun's had 17 touches already and played 20 minutes in the second quarter. Back to Makoski. Left foot kick to the leading half forward. Out comes Staker oh. with courage. Good play there by both players again. Don't tell me that was Bell who stuck his head yeah. in was it? Yeah, Bell again, ran oh, back with the flight. Like that. Well, he, some of the Dockers need to actually... If I was a Docker and I ran off the ground at half-time, you, you'd drop your eyesight from Peter Bell. You wouldn't actually want to look him in the eyes because you know you're not giving him the equal. And he's been fantastic. He's a wonderful example. And certain blokes who just aren't following the lead. In his case, you might have to lift your eyesight to yeah. the guys. <laughs> but uh, it's picked up by Kerr. Gets it away. Another goal coming up for the Eagles. You can almost smell it as it goes forward. Picked off this time, though, by Grover. Thumping kick. Up towards the wing position. Selwood has been good. He's been great, in fact, against Hazelby. Hazelby hasn't had much of it at all tonight. Look at the look on their faces. Right there, right there man. Tells the story. He's frustrated, Hazelby. Young Selwood in his first year has been sensational. Just three touches. The clearance is Kerr's got six. But as a team, they are smashing it around these stop plays. Boundary throw it on the other side. Somehow, Sandlin's almost finished up with it. Down he goes. Claimed by Kurt. Oh. Judd once more. Slick hands. Very quick. Got it away to Fletcher. Kicks inside the ball at 50. Foreman reaches over the top. Punched it. As far as Schofield. Sampy came again. Tackled him. Stake up. Steps out of the tackle. Gets it to Stenblad. Kicks it down towards full Foreman. Pitch in front of Lynch. Crowd one of three. Lynch goes back with Parker. Parker and Lynch. Loose ball. Picked up by Bell. Scrambles it towards the boundary line. Happy with that crowd. Unhappy. They thought he should have got a free kick. And we've got a boundary throw it instead. 13-5 at the throwing clearances. So uh, that's in favour of Eagles. So you'd be nervous if you're a Docker supporter right now. But the first possession after a clearance is so clear and clean that the pace of players are getting into space. Behind the pack. Chance for Peak. Socket away by Schofield. Hazelby. Peaks old into trouble, taken down by CB, and that ball fails to come out. Got a whistle just outside the 50. Well, what damage will this wreak on the Fremantle Dockers? Clinging to a spot in the eight. Percentage will take a kick on what we've seen so far. And what about their confidence? It's happened so often in the past. Schofield to peak now, Shammer. Touches it down, runs inside the centre square, looking towards half forward. A second touch. That goes long. by hand back to Thornton. Not much up ahead for him. He's got it again, Shammer. Kicks well inside the 50, but directly to two West Coast Eagles, one of whom Hunter takes the mark. He just held that ball too long. He's, he was offered two good leads, but never really raised his vision. Not the science the going forward. Kick it to Pavlich. Well, yeah. Pavlich made position there, had it all open in front, and Shammer kicked it to the wrong side. Gave him no chance. Crowley. Oh, nice. Good play. Matthew Carr has it. Long way from home. Boots it up now to the forward 50 position. Pavlich. Oh. Bounced off his nose in the end. And he's not happy. He didn't quite glove that one. Could have taken it on his chest in the end. Let's have a look here. There's Pavlich. Look at it. Got away. And the ball went inside. Well, he was running to the fat side. Yep. Josh Carr. 
Tries to get it going. Medhurst has been very quiet. He's got a few mates out there. Cook fights hard for the ball. Carr over the top. Cook again. Picked up on this occasion by Heath Black. Is he threaded it? No, he's just missed. Yeah, I know they've got to win footy in the middle. They've had 11 possessions in their forward 50. Freo, uh, West Coast have had 30. So they're getting smashed in the centre. They can't keep it in their forward 50. They can't win the ball. We're a punder. That's it to Braun. It's been so good. Short to Jones. Has to wait. That's a very good mark. Yeah, good hands. Yeah, Real pressure. On. And it's a good mark. Mikoski drives it long from half back, just beyond the wing. Kerr comes back. Had it knocked away by Shammer. It's out of bounds at the interchange gates. That's a great pair of hands there. Well done. And Cookie gave him a real, some real treatment there as he came at it. 11-5 plays, 3-2 approaching half time. And that tells the story. The runners Ooh. running riot. Shammer into the path of Cook. Cousins wanted it most. <laughs> Judd, Braun, little fumble from Kerr, Cox, not a runner, but he's running inside the centre square, Jones, was it 50, and on next side, Jones to space, Sampy, great running, juggles it, and he's marked 40 metres out. He came from this wing, that last boundary throw in, or ball up, whatever it was, and ran the other side of the ground. Well, Cook's trying to have a go, he and Bell are yeah. trying to have a dip to stir something up, but... No one's really following. Not a bad finishing move either. It's a good yeah. game. The boys said Wood came over. Yeah, Cookie got to him and <laughs> carried in longer. That's dissolved pretty quick. Well, I reckon about now, Chris Connolly is thinking he can't have too many cooks. At least that the way, at least that way they wouldn't steal the broth. We've got no broth. <laughs> Here's Sampy. Steps inside the 50. A bit thin it is. Misses to the near side. Cool. Half time. Is there some work to be done? Well, we've spoken about the uh, huge rate of possession for the midfield for the West Coast Eagles as Kerr gets another one and a good tackle by the skipper there, not letting anything get past him tonight. How about this for low disposals for the Fremantle Dockers? McFarlane's at two, Farmer three, Medhurst three, Grover three, Hazelby four, and Shammer five. Yeah. There you go. And uh, they just, they look not, in, well, intimidated. They do look intimidated. They, for West Coast, are just inside, they're harder at it. 17-7, inside 50 this quarter. Kerr finds space. Left foot kick. Trying to kick to the top of the square. Uh, if they all had front position, West Coast, at that last stoppage, and it looked like Freo were waiting for them to take it, then they tackle them. Burt Thornton brings it out wide to Black. He gets some booze for his early indiscretion. His kick is close to the boundary line. Keeping it in just was peak. Good play. He's got some pace, the ball. Finds a bit of pace, yeah. Finds a bit of space as well. Kicks up towards half forward. But we're Punda had it all day. Ripunda kicks to the outer side now. Cox gets across, takes the mark, flicks it off to Fletcher, who's been fantastic tonight as well. Stinklon was all on his own, he didn't see, and he's kicked it out of bounds on the full. The free kick to be taken by Mundy. The, the last boundary line throw in at that half forward flank, you know you're going well in your stoppages when Chris Judd is offering blocks for his teammates. Now Dodd is getting 50 against Staker. Look at the West Coast all pushed back here. Big Dean Cox is sprinting back to uh, Pavlich. So the opposing ruckman for Freo, like Sandlands, is walking. Now he's got to get inside forward 50 and take Cox away from Pavlich. Dodd kicks well inside the forward 50. Pavlich battling there with Hunter. Taken by Farmer. Goes with the outside of the effort. Effort. That's not a bad effort. That's a beauty. They get their fourth goal. A belated goal. We're spot on with that one, guys. With Sandlands just ambled over the centre square here. Good contest by Pavlich again, but look where they have to go for it. The amount of numbers pushed back by the West Coast Eagles and Jeff Farmer. Well, they might do that maybe once or twice again tonight. You can't see him taking hold of this match the way it is. So they have just been in unbelievable control in the centre. This is his dominant midfield in a game we've seen this year. 
two West Coast players across half back, including Ben Cousins. So he's coming off the back of the square on his own now. That is not a hard tag. Whoever's got Ben Cousins. Well, up in the centre of the ground, Cook, who I understand we've just been told is reported for wrestling. We'll have a look at that again. That incident with Kerr. Kerr yeah. not reported. Yeah, I, don't reckon, I don't reckon it was Cook who initiated the wrestling. Is Kerr now chips it out wide, and away they go again. Green from 52 metres, kicks long, it's a good kick, just a, oh, Lynch put out the big bit, he's taken the mark, great mark. Well, this is worth a look. Mark trying to claim it. Have a look at the mark. Yeah, that's a mark. Yeah, that's a yep. mark. Started with leaving Ben Cousins off the back of the square, and he ran through, got the footy on the wing, yeah, away he went. So Big Lynch has kicked one. He'd have to fall over to miss it from here. He'd still kick it even if he did. Didn't matter, he's kicked his second, and that is the highest score in a derby at half time. West Coast against Fremantle, 78 to 26. The Eagles are on fire. Well, it's just staggering. This is just staggering that a team can be outpointed, outplayed, outmuscled, outrun in the centre of the ground. At least, um, no, they got to well. You're going to kick some goals if you get it in your forward half 33 times <laughs> or better in, in a half of footy. Mark has probably done a right to keep links to two. Yep. Margin 52 points, Cox lays it go. down into the path of Cousins, superbly done, Cousins is away, kicks for space, Lynch works in front, in fact it's CB down there, got hands to it, Grover to Thornton, gets the kick off, Longmuir goes across and claims the mark, the defensive side of the wing to Bell, to Cook, confronted, back to Bell, no support to Black now. Eventually, they create some space. This is Dodd inside the forward 50. McFarlane worked out of it. Well played by Glass. Got a hand on the football. Medhurst backs out of trouble. He's about 70 metres from goal. Well, that makes it very hard. Shanna has to wait. Three Eagles players bearing down. Green was able to punch it away. Pavlich was in there. Hand pass comes across the top. Now a chance for Crowley. Crowley lines up and kicks a goal. Well done. Well, for the sake of the game, you need him to kick one or two more. Or there's only a minute or so to go. But uh, there wasn't any great design to it at all. There wasn't any great system. It's just win a bit of contested footy. And West Coast, I guess, were uh, so used to winning the ball that they're starting to set up for next possession. On that occasion, Fremantle won it. They had two players running free. <laughs> but uh, there's no great system to it. Look like they're headed. How do you reckon he's feeling about getting his hair cut like this this morning when they're going in half time, seven down? What yeah. do you say to the hairdresser when you ask for it? Feels like an anchor. Let's hope he asked for it, didn't it? <laughs> As Cousins knocks it forward. mccoskey has been good tonight. He got one in the back there and he'll get the free kick. He's back. He's a chance to go right Play to the line right. from him. It'll be a 60 back. metre on the fly kick. He'll probably try and spot somebody up, but he's a monster oh. kick. He does go for the spot up, but it's a good oh, one good. too. Look at that. Lace out onto Lynch's chest, and Big Lynch has kicked two goals this quarter. And with 40 seconds and counting from now, let's have a look at Cook. This is the incident. Um, um, he plays the report. tackle, yeah, he went on with and it. he and he falls on it. He puts a hand on the face, but he gets to go up. Oh. And Kerr, no, he went to run off. He did. He put the hand on the face, Good. and Kerr drags him back. Good joke, and that's just well, that's what. Ah. Did you not see him? Well, I'm saying he did that, yes. Oh, you're right. He, but that's, he, you're if right. you he want was, to report him for that. He was trying to run away as he pushed his head into the ground for the first time. Aren't you allowed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> He's not really going to be sticky. He gets a fine. Lynch is offline. Well, no any, one got anyone hurt. would be. Anyone would be. No one got Stiff hurt. Stiff to go. Yeah. And yeah. just hearing that Selwood might also have been reported there, boys. There's a third man in doing the jumper scratching. Okay, all right. Let's go down to Dr. Peter Larkins. Pete. Yeah, Michael Braun's been off the ground with a hip flexor strain over the last uh, 10 minutes. Ed, he's coming good, but it, uh, he's certainly been playing well. It's a cold night. They'll certainly want to work on him at half time. Thornton to Black. Swings it out very wide. Taken by Grover. Hut against the line. Dying seconds of the first half. Here's Longmuir. 
Kicks beyond the wing, running hard. McFarlane takes the mark on his chest on the siren. Well, what can you say? The dominance has been total. Simply put their imprimatur on this guy. He's on the report. The biggest halftime score in a derby has been posted by the West Coast Eagles. They have been awesome on a slippery night at Subiaco Oval. Halftime, 12.779, eclipsing Fremantle 5.232. Great stuff at halftime. The Simpson Oz kick as we get set for the third quarter. Let's go down to Tony Jones at the Derby. Now, uh, Eddie, I know that you've seen the Stanley Cup, which is the uh, the trophy for the ice hockey players. That's the biggest trophy in world sport. I reckon this would have to be the second biggest, if not the heaviest. It is the Carlton Mid Derby Trophy. The West Coast Eagles hold it, and you reckon they might have one hand on it tonight as well? I think they might have both hands on it at the moment. Uh, I'll give you some stats in a moment uh, that'll. Tell a story as Judd runs out of the centre again. Kicks inside the forward 50. Up in front was Lynch. Mundy away to Parker. Hugs the boundary with a kick. In fact, puts it across the boundary. Out of bounds on the full. Get those stats in a moment. Doc? Yeah, Drew Bramfield spent a bit of time last quarter off the ground. Got a bad cork thigh. He's back out there, I noticed. Very heavily strapped to right thigh for Banfield. Good news, Michael Braun back in the centre for the Eagles. Well, Cook's having a private war with Kerr tonight. The stat, 194 disposals tonight to the West Coast Eagles is their equal best halftime effort in the past six seasons since these stats have been collated. So there you go. Equal with round 16, 2005 against Brisbane. 194 possessions at halftime. Dennis, interested to hear in that interview you conducted with Chris Connolly as Sanderlands is having a shock at a night, falls over. Selwood flicks it forward, throws as the umpire, free kick to the Dockers. That in that uh, interview, Chris Connolly said that two things. One, he had to be in front at half time. Well, he's clearly not that. He's 47 points behind. But he said he's got two champs, Nothing Bell and Pavlich, and he needs another 10. That was a very, very prescient comment. Nothing's changed. Oh, no, that's two tonight. Yeah, and uh, we mentioned Cook as well. At the start, they've uh, persisting with Medhurst up forward to try and kick a goal long here in the square. Sandlin stumps it inside the forward 50. Going back is Fletcher. Nobody went to him, at least initially. Pavlich took him down. That's holding the ball. Well done by Pavlich. They play on, but it's coming back. Crowley in a stand down with Just. Don't throw your arms. I'm just saying, OK? It's going to be a free kick to Matthew Pavlich for holding the ball. He was actually reluctant to go to the tackle there. He held off, hoping that his midfielders... That's uh, the after, aftermath of the uh, aftermath of the tackle. Actually, he held off, hoping his midfielders could run forward with that spilling ball, and then, as an afterthought, ran in and laid the tackle. That springs eternal, Dan. Yeah. Well, one on the board and a win in the second half, Dan. That's right. He's kicking at his fourth. Looks like he got some sort of grip, perhaps, on his hand there, Matthew Pavlich. But yeah, he did. Had the opportunity to get rid of it. He didn't and uh, didn't realise that Pavlich was behind it. Probably the same thing that Nick Revolt was smelling at half time last <laughs> week. And if it is the case, you know, the ball probably won't drop. The secret ingredient in that grippo? No. Floor polish. Is that the one? It sticks to anything. Will the ball fall from his hands? Yes, it does, cleanly. And he kicks effectively. He's got four. No, he's missed. He's just hung it out to the right. Too much floor polish. Not happy with the grip either. He won't want to lick it too much either. He's got a fair case though. He's had about he's kicked about 36-4 or something up until then. 33 goals for coming in tonight, as you say there, Gary. 36 goals to that moment. 36-4 now, 36-5. It comes out. So what do we got a bad bounce there? Let's get it off the turf. Hazelby has been very quiet tonight. Five possessions only. The big kick up towards the full forward position. A fly from behind. Midhurst. McFarlane's got it. McFarlane coming in there. Midhurst really didn't need to fly there, Gary. No, he yeah, should have laid him, a block. Give him the assist, Midhurst. He was the dummy. Have a look. He's a dummy like Dirk. Yeah. Just to draw the attention. Draw the fire. Yeah. 
I really feel that the way Luke McFarlane's moving tonight, though, he's not carrying any injury. He's moving very quickly. McFarlane comes in and kicks the goal. He's first of the evening. They need the first goal, which is, goes, uh, I don't know why I said it. But uh, they had a couple of opportunities now. Uh, Pavich has got it. McFarlane's got it. Troy, uh, big Justin Longmuir as a foul has also got to start to get busy. Dermy, he's done virtually nothing. No, and he's been so good this season. I'm really convinced that if they can, it's all about the centre of the ground because I'm convinced that McFarlane and Pavlich, given a good supply, can beat their direct opponents yeah. tonight. Well, some heartening news. The Dockers have got the last two goals in this game. The last of the first half, and now the first of the second half, and three of the last four. Here's Kerr, uh, the middle. May have been touched, doesn't matter. It wanders out towards right half forward. Coming up is Grover. Did well. Good hand pass. Sandalin's in trouble. Lays it off. Hazelby. They're looking better. And playing with a bit more urgency. Oh, clever by Judd. Simply stood his ground at the drop zone. Outmaneuvered Cook and took the mark. Started Finds the call. on his own, uh, Dennis, if you can believe it. Judd kicking down towards half forward. You find that hard to believe, don't you? There's the mark taken by Lynch. He's been an effective target tonight, too. 65 metres from home. Normally a long kick, and this is a punishing kick. They'll compete about five metres out. Off hands, wide of the pack. Cousins, deep in the pocket. Smothered off the boot by Bell. Cousins comes again. Oh, terrific. Well done by Thornton. Punched out of there by Carr. Hitting back in the race is Bell. Bell gets boot to ball. Did Morton touch it? No, he did not. So it's out of bounds on the full. Bad luck for the Dockers and their skipper. Hey, Cousins still hasn't got anyone here. He's on a short lead. Come outside now. Now, Sammy's a show to kick this. He should go back. He's got the one, the opening goal of the match. Dry ball. Three minutes old in the second half. This is not beyond him. From outside 50, sharp angle. He's prodigious talent. Doesn't get a lot of the footy. He's a low possession half forward flanker. But just prodigious talent. Ashley Sampy then. The kick from right on the 50. The sharpest of angles. Sets it out to the right. They'll compete about 10 metres out. Off hands, live football. Thump back across the line. Tony Jones. Just a confirmation of those couple of reports from the second quarter. Wrestle, Selwood and Cook have both been pinged for that. OK, thanks, Tony. So Judd reported in the first quarter for rough play against Bell. Black reported for Kerr striking. And Troy Cook and Selwood for wrestling in the second. Josh Carr brings the ball out to his brother, Matthew. Pass kick over the centre wing, looking for Pavlich. He used his body beautifully. Umpire's oh, he's taken it back. That was a good contest, that one. Troy Pennell. Front on. You are absolutely not joking. <laughs> Politely done. This didn't swear. It's terrific. I think he spoke into the microphone, too. Uh, Big Pav. I tend to agree with Big Pav. Yes. Yeah, oh, that's why right, I got pinged for it. <laughs> ah. Please. Staker inside 50. Some smothering at least now by the Fremantle Dockers. Three good smothers inside defensive 50 in the last couple of minutes as Carr goes again. Judd, relentless. Look at that. Great play. Kept the ball going. He was dragged off the ball. Should have got the free kick. There's an assist. It doesn't matter. Kerr's got the goal. Chris Judd, you start. Created a goal when the standard play is to take the ball over the boundary line and regroup and get one from the stoppage. The, even the Dockers backman would have been thinking here, well, he'll take the boundary line here and, and try his luck at the next throw in. It's a great, it's a great call, Jim. I think everyone on the ground had conceded there was just going to be one out. 11 goal kickers now. Put your hand up if you thought this was going out of bounds. I reckon 50,000 here and four, five of us up here. And two Dockers. <laughs> and two <laughs> Docker players, exactly <laughs> And right. they're the ones that counted. 13-8, 6-3. Jada virtuoso performance tonight. Hazel be out of the middle. Kicks inside the forward 50. Pitches in front of Pavlich with courage. Longview had dived in. Now he needs to be careful. He did drag it in. It comes out. Staker spins out of the would-be tackle. He's away. Drives it back inside the centre square. Almost a clever mark to Grover. 
Goes back, finds the football, looks towards half forward. Cousins cuts oh. off the angle. Came across almost the market's pay. He sat there, Justin Longyear. Didn't move to the footy, just stood in one spot. And the little man came and stole it, but that's ambitious. Kerr kicked it back to Cousins, gave it to Banfield Judd. Brilliantly done. Sent Cousins away into space. He kicks down towards half forward. Lynch is up as he pushed to the back. No three. Parker comes away. Spots Crowley. Crowley is running. Goes beyond the wing. Miss kicks. And not the man to miss kick it too. Chris Judd. He knew what he was trying to do. He saw Sandlands down the spine of the ground there. The one two when they, when they messed up that that uh, Sandlands mark. He needed to be told there was an approaching player by, by Farmer. Kerr gives it to Cousins. Cousins kicks inside the forward 50. Coming up is CB, takes the mark, juggles it. That's a couple of quick. Nobody in the square, leading back from all directions are Eagles. Down towards Jones, off hands Fletcher. Well, they ran harder. They simply ran harder and they got the goal. This first. 12 goal kickers now for West Coast. You're dead right, they are working harder and they're just not accountable enough. I was just going to answer a question that I reckon hundreds of thousands of people at home are sitting there asking at the moment. Who's on Cousins and who's on Judd? Well, Walker is the man who's on Judd, although he's now gone to the back half on Cousins, so he's got the double whammy. I'm not so sure about that now. Wow, 53 points the margin now. After 10 minutes into this third quarter, the Eagles have kicked the last two goals. And after Fremantle finally put a pair together, biggest lead of the match at the moment. Game high 53 is Hazelby. Selwood has been fantastic. Hazelby, a wonderful player, has had no oxygen tonight at all. Adam Selwood, what a night he's had. Yeah, Nine possessions for Hazelby. Yeah, he's played great. Crowley is the man who's on Chris yep. Judd. If you're sitting at home wondering who's on him, and Walker's now got Cousins. So they're the two that should be on him. Sandilands gets it down. Fletcher. Geez, had a good night. <laughs> there he is again. Judd's kick. No need to say it was a good one. And guess who's on the other end of it? Cousins. Cox ran hard. Great play by the big man. Strong mark taken. Deserved that. He ran off. Kerr's got away all on his own. That's where the kick's going. Off hands. He might still get it. Kerr's got it. Beautifully twisting and turning. Touched. Another smother for the Dockers. Punched away there by Jones. who has been a good player tonight. Jones, you've got the handball to Kerr for the last goal. Goes hard again. Did it very well. He's held it in yeah, and will have a bounce. Good play. Yeah. Rowan Jones, 13 disposals tonight. And he's kicked two goals. So a good night. Peter Bell's pointing at Daniel Kerr, saying someone. And well, that's Matthew Carr on, on Kerr. Knocked down by Cox. Now there's a whistle. And is it coming back to the Eagles? I think it is. Judd goes in and kicks a goal, wanting advantage. He had the ball in his coat. Oh, touching. Yep. Took him to the ground in a tackle. Fell over. I did. All right, you've had your say, Peter. Leave it at that. Very polite, the Fremantle Dockers, in the way they... Yeah, well, at the bottom of screen here. Have their say. Yeah, he's got a case. Oh, that's uh, not where you get them, or where you... Where you not how many you get, it's where you get them. That's easy for you, isn't it? Thank you. Tyson Stengelheim back in the team tonight. He's been very good. We've had the role with Bell all evening. How's this for us, that, boys? Free kicks, West Coast Eagles 24, Fremantle 8. Stendline gets his second goal. Well, it's just more of the same. More midfield dominance, more supply forward, and, a, <laughs> and another even spread of goal kickers. And I've got to tell you, now this is a sign that they're not quite switched on, guys. Young Dodd went to run onto the field, take his position. He was stopped by his official and said, no, you better take off your tracksuit top before you go on. Dermot's in again. Yeah, young Dodd's going on to pick up Judd now, and he was stopped by his official and said, you better take your tracksuit top off before you run onto the field. He forgot he had it on. They are not switched on. That's how cold they are tonight. Parker tries to get it out. A rare mistake, Sampy. 
Look at that kick to the hot spot. Oh. Out they come. Yeah. CB ran hard at the ball. The handball came out from Mundy. Parker to Mundy. Bell, who's been fantastic tonight. Kicks it long, but they've got the numbers again. The Eagles, Staker at the back of the pack. He's able to grab it and burst past Carr. Hamble's off to Cox. Cox looks up, CB's clear, and has got it. James, in fact, has got it. At half four flat, so Rowan Jones has had a wonderful night tonight. Boys, before we said 24-8, the free kicks. Freo haven't had one since quarter time. Having said that, they probably haven't deserved it either. Oh. That was CB, couldn't get it. Kerr, underneath the pack, he will saw tomorrow, he's worked hard, he got the ball out again. Here's Cousins, around the body to the open square, got it, Lynch, off the ground. Yes, Rowan Jones has hit the post, and now Jones has kicked two goals, one for the night. He's done well, Rowan Jones, because when the ball's come in in the air, Anthony Grove has been able to beat him, but he's been able to manipulate the situation to get into space. Well, he's had a fair bit of practice to learn what to do with the ball coming in so much. Parker in the back pocket. Goes very wide. Long here, slides and takes the mark. Coming up to his sixth possession. What a battle it's been for the Dockers. High one beyond the wing. Pavlich. Good on possession, comes away with Dash, penetrating kick to deep in the 50. Downward Hunter, one man left standing for the Eagles in the 50, but that was a nice stake. He kicks it up towards the wing, and they're on the run again. Here's Bourne looking down towards left half forward, coming hard. The mark is taken there by Jones. Jones spots CB, goes in that direction, and CB's taken the mark about 35 metres out. On a 45 degree angle, maybe a little wider. Well, Sandilands has gone to rest forward and he just uh, was followed Staker in by about 15 metres, and that was enough. Away they went. It's a went. shame because McFarland had his man done. Yeah, they're precise through the middle. It's been the most dominant midfield display I can recall for a long time as Braun comes off for a spell. If he gets it, he'll be the 13th goal kicker. And he's normally pretty reliable. Oh, good on you, Dan. Desperate times deserve desperate measures, Derm. The ball off hands and three for a behind. The, the other important thing to note here is how important this is for Fremantle. I mean, this could do untold damage to their psyche. They've worked hard to get themselves back. Five wins against bottom eight sides, albeit. But, gee, this is a reality check. Yeah, not to mention the percentage. Yep. Hazelby. He's just had one of those nights tonight. He's worked hard, but uh, Selwood is warning like the proverbial glove. And again, when he's got it, he's kicked it out of bounds on the foot. We came in with a percentage of 105.3, Fremantle. And that'll drop a bit, you would imagine, after tonight. It's, it's going to go down to the wire for Fremantle. Touch and go. It's going to be around 22 decision whether they make the finals. Well, it's good news for the Bulldogs because if they can get some wins going up, they'll uh, draw level on terms as far as the win-loss is concerned. Right, he's got to get the percentage up. It's uh, Sandlin's opponent. He's run down the ground again. 36 players in the left-hand side of the ground. Hunter's kick up to the goal square. They're consistent with that kick to the top of the square. Monday has been pretty good for the Dockers. And the Farmer, and they've all got back. Oh, oh, look at that. He's having a mare. A nightmare, says Dermot, for the Wiz. G is what his coach would have said looking at that one. Five that disposals. This bloke's had a good night, Daniel Kerr. Again to the top of the square it goes. They all come running out. Cox, Lynch, CB, take your pick. This time it was big Dean Cox. He got to the front of the pack. Just clean that up and top. Yeah, they are undersized <laughs> down there. Well, I mean, Robbie Hadrill's a long-term injury. Park has been brave for so many years now. Look at the, the attempted spoil comes up to the elbow. 13th goal kicker, Dermot, coming up for West Coast. And this is why he's got such good accuracy, because when he rests forward, he's so tall, he marks so close to goal. So Cox comes in to be the 13th goal kicker of the night for the West Coast Eagles. No mistake, this is becoming a rout. Just 
Right, right. right. They're in shellacking territory right, right at the moment. Right. We've gone past that. This has been smashed since halfway through the first quarter. Just a diversionary question, just so when the female coaching staff watch the tape, they can have a spell. <laughs> Why are the uh, boundary umpires in white? I just never shot the gun. Charity, what do you call it? There was white jumpers. Why would they be in orange? Oh, oh, it's fancy know, dress room. Oh, <laughs> put red stripes on them, they need them. The league leaders, hot tonight. 16 10, players 6 3. Last halfway in the third term. On the way down, long view it to Bill, who's tried so hard. Kicks towards half forward. Banfield and Farmer. Camped in the numbers. Fletcher. Interesting hand pass, Fletcher. Broad. Rather Judd was trapped. The bounce just inside the centre square. Those blokes, Judd, Kerr, put Cousins in there as well somewhere, Fletcher. They'll be in the top five in every stat count at the moment. Umpire throws it up quickly. CB backhands it down. Judd didn't have the football. He'll get the free kick. He had 16 possessions going into this um, third quarter. He's now coming up for his 24th, so he's eighth touch. The staggering thing is, though, right now, Fremantle have only got one player with double figures in his effective disposal column. Staker, beautiful kick under the chest of Lynch. Yes, a lot of the payroll for the Dockers not fighting the footy. Long kick inside the forward 50. Thornton against Cox. Monday got the crumb away to Black. Now Medhurst. Deep in his own defensive area, a little chip. Here comes Farmer. Up he goes, and that's a good mark. What will he do? Thought about going, decides not to, with some justification. Very little up ahead. Medhurst at centre half back. Oh, Loki hand pass too, wasn't looking. That was Grover. Worked out okay. Hazelby at centre half back goes towards centre half forward. Sandilands, well, once he went to ground, they had a problem. Staker knocked it away. Stenglein goes in. Picked up by Schofield at close quarters to Pavlich. That was clever back to Bell. Now Sandilands from 70. Long down towards full forward. Going back is Hunter. The ball runs on. It's a goal. The big goal. Most unconvincing. We saw the CB drop back just in front of where this ball ends up clearing. Now CB is Longmuir's opponent. See CB there at the top of the square now. Longmuir is still walking in from the other side. Now he had to go closer to drag CB away from there. That could have been very dangerous for CB so easily to pick that one off. Most inconclusive goal. The margin 61 points. Sandilands kicks the Dockers' second goal of the term. Longmuir goes up. It's picked up by Cousins again. Another beautiful smother there by Longmuir. He got the kick in the head on the way through from Cousins. Run out the footy. Check. Judd. Not good enough there from Medhurst, Dermot. It? Uh, it's like men and boys at the moment. Yeah, but you've actually got to make sure that when you run out the ball, if you miss it, it hits you in the belly button. It was out wide of his arm reach. Sampy flicks the ball out to Lynch. Look at the big man go. Slams it on the left boot. A high up and under. Inside the forward 50, it goes again. Off hands. Jones did pretty well. Picked up by Grover. Gets the handball going to Mundy. Carr. Up the wing position. From behind, Judd goes to spoil. Does it nicely. And over the line it goes. And out of bounds for a throw. In. Now, have a look at this now. What's where he goes for it? There. Oh, he got a bit of a tricky bounce on it, so you can't sell him short completely on that one. But, gee, at least accept that your opponent's got to get you if you just dive on it. Boundary throw in. Longmuir knocks it down. Only as far as Stenglein with the inside of the boot. Bounces it out of bounds. 25 metres closer to goal. They've smashed him at the clearances. They've smashed him in every area, including inside 50s. But just when you look at this one right here, they are first inside. They are the first players at it. Well, here we go. One stat Frio leads into the one percenters. Makes a mockery of the one percenters. 47 to 35 off the ground by Cousins. Who calls those one percenters anyway? <laughs> On the opposite side of the ground. 
Picked up by Johns. Arches the back. Slides away. Mikoski. Well done by Carr. Got him down, but not in time. Banfield is released. Longmuir should take the mark. Out wide is Medhurst. He'll get it next. It's Medhurst just shy of the wing. He's getting some Bronx cheers from his own supporters, Medhurst. There's Mundy. Runs down towards half forward. Oh, good That's a run. good kick. And the good mark run. is taken there behind the forward two by Peak. He, moves, he covers the ground pretty well, this young boy. Looks a player, doesn't he? Yeah, he ran pretty hard from the centre of the ground. Right about now, he's broken out of the centre square. Why well, they get the Bronx cheers is that Medhurst has to go down to the back half to pick up a kick there. That's the problem there. And uh, Justin Longley has had to come on the footy and get a few across half back. Well, Gary, I don't think the crowd realise that Fremantle lead in the one percenters. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they've had plenty of chance to smother and tackle, haven't they? Nonsense, is that? Here's Peak. He'll kick from inside the 50. No, he's tugged it left. Still a live football knocked down in front. Crowley. Now, in fact, it must have been across the line because the goal umpire is conferring with the central umpire. And when that happens, it's generally a behind. Disposals inside 50, 47 West Coast Eagles, 17 Fremantle. Some 30 disposals inside 50. More to the West Coast Eagles tonight. Yeah, they just can't keep it in there, really. Fremantle, I'm talking about. They yep. cannot keep it in there forward 50 at all. Check to Cox. The centre wing and Stingline. He has been with Bell. Maybe it's time for Bell to try and run on the Cousins just to change it up a bit to find out what Stingline does then. Up towards the half forward flank position. Carr's tried hard tonight. Matthew Carr. He's had 13 disposals. Matthew Carr again. Up to centre wing. Another contest here. Three Eagles and two Dockers. Oh. Cookcock went in the mush. Umpire said play on. Cox again gets the handball inside. Well done by Longwell. Caught from behind by Chick. Got the handball, said the umpire. Stengline now. Slams it on the boot. Up towards half forward. Hit him in the Over head. the head of Sandlands. If he had to put his hands up, he might have got it to him. <laughs> he could have hit him in the head. Again, a high up and under. Cox gets over this. Longmuir did very well. And Cox might have got a bit of a corky there. Good track. I saw it. Cook. Umpire said it was knocked out. Cox again. Hard at it. Over the line for a throw in. He held the tackle too long there. He never had the football. No, he did have the footy. So Cox will get the free kick. He's actually knocked down in front of him. That old trick there. Yeah. He just held him too long in the tackle there. Young Peak. So Cox, side leading by 60 points, two and a half minutes till three quarter time or thereabouts. Goes down towards half Freak court. Yeah, Pavlich. Pavlich, yes. Shepherd it out of the contest. Letter Black. Black looks across the ground. That's a punishing kick. Didn't quite get there in time. Morton did well. Good right? tackle by Parker. Got CB down. Morton, though, the first to arrive. Little chip towards half forward. Lynch leads back. He's about 35 metres from goal. The 221s clash. Lynch throws it on the boot and kicks it behind. That probably lost a couple of, what do you call it? Pounds per square inch pressure out of the ball when he killed the There's There's the killer Pascals. Took his eyes off the footy. Absolutely right. No worries there. Kicks the cover off at Lynch, does he? Got another stat for you, Dennis. Mm -hmm. Got the free arrow in, in, in front of him. Yeah. Clangers, turnovers, 46 to 26. Makes a little more sense here. Yeah. So when they get it, which isn't often tonight, they give it straight back under the pressure. Take nothing away from the pressure, exactly. They're, they're so disciplined, West Coast. Looking around with it here. Look at this. Oh, oh. Ugly, ugly football. Because they can't get the free player, which I think is the way they like to play. They like to run hard from the back half, but the lockdown jobs have been amazing. That, that, there's a luxury. 4%. Gee, less than. Three and a bit. Braun and Cousins have dominated tonight, just having a bit of a spectate. And why not? They can look at this oh, ball. What a John picked what it a up. Gather. As if he had a handle on the ball there. Beautiful kick forward. And yep. Casey Graham, full chested, takes the mark. He almost overran the ball and just kept, with the hand on, the contact on it the whole time, just kept wheeling it along in front of him until he could secure it. Green's had a good night. As we said, his first game since round seven last year. 
CB is the man in the square who will be the big target this time with Lynch already pushed out. Seven disposals. He's kicked the goal from outside the 50. It's a beautiful looking kick to Casey Green. He's got his second of the night. Go on, dude. What, it, well, what do you say? They just mean, look at that. <laughs> He's just able to gather that. I mean, everyone who's winning the ball, everybody's doing something right. We've just spoken of time and time again. How many times can you say that in midfield? It's just, if people thought they were shaking over the last three weeks because they've lost two out of three, they've come here tonight and they'll go, oh, they're back, they're on some. Margin 67 points. Just over a minute till three-quarter time. Umpire tosses it up again. Cox marginally. That was a sleight of hand by Sandilands outside of the boot there Numbers. from Schofield. That's another turnover. How many is that? 48, is it? 48. Yeah. Kick the goal. Kerr. High ball down towards full forward. Going back and the mark is taken by Seabrook. Uh, the ball came out of the middle. There were four Eagle players onto it to one Fremantle player. And Kerr did just a little bit of magic, and Kerr's bobbing up here as a potential to steal the thunder of Judd Cousins and Braun. 189 centimetres to 200 centimetres of CB here. They're undersized down back. What's it through? CB's first. Oh, what are we up to? Yeah, let's count that one up, guys. 16 is the record of individual. 14, do that we're up to. That is the interesting that lies in this game. Well, who, do, who gets, needs to get a kick here? We need to well, get, we're going to go for it. Banfield won't get one. He's in the back half. Glass so won't chip. kick it, even if you give it to so him in the goal glass. square. Nikoski could get one. Staker could get one. Selwood could get one. Hunter. Oh, I can't bear two blows. Jones should get one. Chicky has it. Chicky's had a couple of minor hauls this year, three or so. He hasn't got one yet. It'll be tough while he's on the bench, though. Yeah, that is tough. Yeah. Well, but they're going that well. Don't, going. Don't, don't, don't discount that possibility. 40 seconds left in the third quarter. Cox cool. goes up and bounces off the bonce of Cook. Stingline. I tell you what, he is the under... He is so underestimated, Tyson Stingline, oh. in the centre line of this West Coast Eagles side. A good player. 20 disposals for Stingline again tonight. Black kicks inside 50, ball runs on, Staker just gets across. Oh, there you go, won't even concede the behind. Beautiful kick, lace out. It's a procession, a clinic out here tonight as Braun gets it from Fletcher. Braun now kicks up the centre wing, look at this. Running hard was Green, taken under the ball. Thornton, first back under pressure. Schofield goes to ground and the Eagles fans stand as one. Huge ovation. Daniel Kerr, no wonder he's feeling the pinch at the moment. He's had a wonderful three quarters of footy. That is the sign of it, isn't it? They run so hard, they interchange their midfielders so hard. You saw, look at Kerr still now, how hard he's running, and they're 12 goals ahead. 18 11, 119. Daniel Kerr has 27 disposals to three quarter time. Lead Fremantle, 7 4 46 at three quarter time. This is Friday Night Football, AFL on 9. Yeah, why wouldn't he be? It's been a, a peerless performance from this midfield that everyone has said had taken over from Brisbane, which is a big call, but tonight they have uh, vindicated the wraps on them. They've been superb. Friday night football start of the final term. The margin 73 points. West Coast Eagles have won their last 19 at home. Judd crashes in. Cook goes down. Banfield's got the football. They stay off him. He goes out to Braun, feeds it back. We're a punder. He's gone the wrong way. Hey, no. He has gone the wrong way until they told him. Ample time to make a correction, Doom. Don't panic. <laughs> now, CB's got the football. He was drawing out the Dockers' defence. That was actually the best uh, attacking move for Fremantle tonight. <laughs> it was positive. <laughs> I'm glad you said something, Doom. I was just running with him and <laughs> taking off. <laughs> Looked okay to me. Had he unloaded it. Was, hey, boys, by the way, uh, the Eagles have got to find room for Hanson, Embley, Gardner and Matera in the next fortnight before the finals as well. That is a scary thing. If they're undersized, this free mound defence. Imagine if um, Hanson was playing and Embley and Gardner. Gardner. Mikoski's kick. Cousins fell over. 
Got up to his knee, got a hand pass across to Fletcher. Judd goes down, and it will be thrown right. in. 119 right. plays 46. There he goes, he's off. A Take a bounce. A bit of compassion from Mira. <laughs> Look at Brawny yelling at him. Hey, hey. Crowley shouldn't have chased him. Exactly. Throw it in. They could have pressured him all the way to the goal square. Farmer, Bell. Farmer, Bell. Black. Just needed some constructive talking. You're clear, you're clear, go hard. <laughs> Sandilands, Farmer, just tips towards half forward, and the mark is taken by McFarlane. And McFarlane at half forward flank looks up, kicks over the head of Medhurst, up towards the full forward position. And uh, there he is, the lone hand in the forward line tonight. Matthew Pavlich has kicked three goals, one, and probably deserves a fourth goal. Inside 50s, 29 to 54 in favour of the Eagles. So his opportunities haven't been great, Matthew Pavlich, but he's kicked four goals. If he does end up kicking, his four out of eight. Good strength there by Matthew Pavlich, having a wonderful season. So he lines up for goal from... Roughly 40 metres out, as you can see, a little bit of an angle. And just slid across the body. And he has now kicked three goals, two. And both behinds have been pretty standard gets for him in a normal... Oh, he's dropped that on the instep, but in a normal circumstance. We're looking for eight Dockers players, two or more, to get goals here. And we'll have the most individual goal kickers in a game of football. Eagles. Oh, Eagles, sorry. Hunter Chick, Brett Jones, Nikoski, Banfield, Stager, Glass and Selwood yet to add to it. Rapunda, complete with his compass, comes out and finds Staker at right half back. Have a shot. Yeah, get out the other end. <laughs> <laughs> well, the best bet would be Brett Jones. He's been half forward all night. Rapunda. Cross the ground, so a compromise kick. CB has it. He's been okay tonight, too. From left half back towards the wing. Glass running hard. Well done. Pavlich came back, gave a contest, got it on the ground. This is Grover. Never minded his game, Dennis. He's had a dig. He's tried hard. Yeah, Black now. Away to Matthew Carr. A little chip across the ground. Crowley. Dodd back to Crowley. Sold into trouble. Taken down by Judd. Managed a hand pass. It was okay. Matthew Carr, his kick not a good one. Bounces just inside the 50. Down goes Cook. He free-wheeled across to Josh Carr, who's been very disappointing. Kicks it down towards full forward. And it bounces through for a behind. Yeah, well, Josh Carr was recruited to add some steel and be able to play on the big occasions when it was needed. You know, he can mix it with the best of them, but he hasn't had an impact tonight at all. Hasn't been nasty enough, I don't think. Probably hasn't been close enough to get nasty enough. I think that's a good point there, Gary. It's all been a bit fast for him today. Gone past him. The numbers have just been unbelievable for the midfield of the West Coast Eagles. Fletch has got another one. Up the line, another yep. loose player. He can't always be driven by stats, but on these occasions, the stats tell a pretty damning story, don't they? Those midfield possessions of West Coast aren't the cheapies. They're, not the, they're either earned by hard running or they're earned inside. Now, this is a West Coast play. And a short, a short pass from their defensive 50 now. And it's folks who come out of the centre. And this will be a long one to a lead. Lynch almost took it. Over the line, out of bounds. But uh, the hard running has been the feature tonight. What they do when they come with a short pass, they don't get blokes to come up to meet it through the midfield. They get them coming out of the centre of the ground who sprint towards the boundary and accept the short pass forward. And that happened three times in, in a row then. Into the boundary throw in. A chance for Cousins. Fletcher upended. The ball spills across the boundary line. Now six Eagles have had 20 possessions or more. The Dockers' best is black with 20. So that to come. Friday night football against the Saints and then a tricky game against Port Adelaide in Adelaide. Sandilands. There's Carr. Close to the boundary line. Hazelby will get a free kick. I think he marked it anyway. Hazelby, who's won, as I said earlier, three Ross Glenn getting medals, so he's been a big performer in these Western Derbies, but not tonight. To half forward. Good use of the body by McFarlane. Now he kicks to space and some hard running. Getting back is Black, and he slides on his knees to take the mark directly in front, about 40 metres out. The times when we've seen Pavlich 
and McFarlane be one out, they've actually done pretty well. You'd say, given more opportunity, they might have been able to control a fairly reasonable score on the board. I mean, the, you look at the supply they've had inside, only 31 and three and a half quarters of footy into the Dockers forward line. Just not enough, no matter who you've got up there. You've got Peter Hudson up there. You're not going to win. Heath Black. Going with his first goal of the night. Fremantle's eighth. Nice finish. He's lowered his colours tonight. I mean, it's good that you can finish off. The thing they have to do is really finish off. They've got to take some positivity out of this match. Well, they're back here next week, Dermot, against yeah. the Saints. So they can't just limp off the field here. They've got to show some sort of spirit. We've got to get something out of this match. He lowered his colours to Braun, who's on the mark. He's had a, a stack of it. Michael Braun. Black gets one back. Scratches one back. The West Coast Eagles tonight wearing black armbands in the memory of the Chief Executive Officer, Trevor Nisbet's mother, who passed away yesterday after a battle with cancer. Our thoughts with the Nisbet family, particularly Trevor. As Cook gets the handball out. Judd. Puts the foot down again. Goes inside 50 with a kick. This one just out in front of Lynch. And over the line it goes for a throw in. It's been a good duel, Lynch and Parker. I think Parker stuck at it really well, considering what's been coming his way. And Lynch has presented at every opportunity. Good crowd. Tenants 47,200. Well, it's a bit different. It's actually 40,720. So the uh, digits just not going quite in there on our screen. 40,720 tonight. Bell comes away. That's a good grab by McFarlane inside the centre square. Just two players down towards the 50, one of whom offers a lead. That's Medhurst. Missed it. Slow to come back. Nikarski. No, he didn't come back, Dennis. Not only slow, just made no effort to come back. All right, Dan. Okay. Sorry. A little stickler. Green gives it across to Fletcher. Fletcher kicks it down towards half forward. Thornton got a hand in there. Once again, that interesting battle. Lynch. Well, there's be an excess against Parker, and we'll have a bounce about 30 metres out from goal. The, the reason I go oh. that one is because he's got talent, Medhurst, but he just, I mean, he could be playing for his position here tonight. You know, how he'll finish off. I'm saying, I got you that time. He threw it up and nobody was looking. Might be enough, uh, that man, for the evening. I know oh, no, he'll come back on. Cousins will have to come off or someone. He's been sensational tonight. To number 20s. Cox trying to hook it down behind. Coming through his car, left the footy behind. In goes Fletcher. Cook put the body about. Longmuir. Heard the voice, but missed Josh Carr. Gathered by Wirapunda. Carr's got him. That's holding the footy. The car has it at half back flank. 13 minutes left in this game. A comprehensive win. Coming up for the West Coast Eagles, all important on the percentage. So, if you're a Fremantle fan, or for that matter, a uh, Western Bulldogs fan, the last 12, 13 minutes here, very important. Of course, uh, Port Adelaide, they've got the benefit of having an extra two points for a draw. The Wizards got one. The Mercurial one kicks in second. So it might have been a young peak once again. Just put the pedal down on the outside, on the outside of that wing over there, and a good direct long kick. Contest to the ground. There's a turnover there. I mean, if you're 60, 70 points up. Now, he's just loping here, and now gets going. Thinking, right, there's an opening here. I can get a bit closer. Kick to the front of the square. I mean, he hasn't been dominant or anything like that, young Pete, but he's shown a bit. So the Dockers, for the second time tonight, get back-to-back -to -back goals. Well, Cox very conscious of Longmuir. Rove to that guy. Kerr was taken down. Hurried kick from Crowley. Down towards half forward. He Coming up one-handed there was McFarlane. Disguising himself as peaked very well, doesn't he? Yeah, glass. And now McFarlane runs in. And what's he done? He's kicked another one. His second. Yeah, let's not be fooled by this. At all. It's a rouge. It's a rouge, that's right. This is just um, 
the midfield of the Eagles. Yeah, well, at least it's Cook, I mean, once again. Yeah, actually, he's been very good, Chalker. Yeah. He's had a crack all night, but uh, this is a bit academic at the moment. I just reckon their forward line, had they... Well, no, they didn't have enough footage, so that's the sort of thing to say, but they, they didn't have a conventional forward line all night. And we're back in the West next Friday night for Friday Night Football. Another elimination final for the Fremantle Dockers up against the Rampaging Saints. Well, I reckon this is the elimination final. Ed. It is. I reckon. It's a big game. Back-to-back -back games for the Fremantle Dockers against arguably the two best teams at the moment. Adelaide, of course, having a fantastic season. You can't discount them. But St Kilda playing wonderful football. So too this mob, the West Coast Eagles, although they've conceded the last three goals, now it's Cousins again out of the centre, up towards half forward, going back and taking a strong mark there. It was Dodd. Mundy. Out wider still. The mark taken by Heath Black. Percentage all important for the Fremantle Dockers. They've lacked this sort of run, you know, this hard running to position all night. I reckon they've been on their heels a fair bit, the Dockers. Shammer. Well, they're starting to get a bit of ball in this quarter. Well, this, this is what didn't happen any early. They didn't have this loose player at half back. Pavic has got a free kick off the footy against Glass at half forward here. Yeah, he was pushed over. And uh, the no, umpire. No, no, you ran into him, knocked him on the ground. That's against you all the way. Yeah. Umpire no Bernie, right on the spot. Pavlich kicks to the pocket, looking for Farmer. Farmer does well to take his man under the ball. He's kicked one this quarter. And he still has one for the quarter, but it's a big chance here for McFarlane. Ran at him. Who's got the free kick. He's made front on contact, but he was actually running at the ball. So it'd be interesting to see this one again. another look, whether he actually knew where the ball was at any time. There's the takedown against Pavlich. Yeah, fair way off the ball. Good appeal from Pav. Yeah, you're out. McFarlane kicked the last goal. We'll he's see that in a moment. He's lined up the seam like you do in under 10s. Plum lining. Yes. <laughs> They've kicked the last four of the Fremantle Dockers. Three to McFarlane, the last two of the game. Ah, oh, that was magnificent. That takes you back to kick, kick to kick on the road. Lining up the seam at the goals. He's not the greatest kick in the world, but he sure can play footy, Luke McFarlane. He hasn't had much supply tonight. When he's got onto the lead, he's looked dangerous, but he just hasn't got down there enough. Yeah, that's a free. No eyes on the free. That's a free. What a... <laughs> I'd love to see that lining up the laces again. <laughs> 119, play 72. Luke McFarlane, three goals. And this is a free kick. Yeah. Uh, the percentage is really important, as you mentioned earlier. So, whilst the cheap goals really in lots of ways, they've got to keep getting them, haven't they? Well, That's they dropped right. from 105.3 to 100 at three-quarter time. They're back up to 102.4. A resurgence here. Yeah. Stay oh, catch. Well. Knocks it down to his own advantage with Black and Ryan quickly. They've actually Cross got some back. Loose men out there. Crowley gave it to Mundy. He goes wide and the mark is taken by Longmuir. Longmuir just forward of the wing, chips towards half forward. Pavlich once more, wheels around, looks down towards full forward. Coming on the lead down there is McFarlane, knocked away by Hunter. McFarlane goes after it. Kerr emerges with it, been a fine player. Heard the voice, came back to Stingline. And they bring it away, the kick from Braun. And now a chance for Fletcher. Goes with the right boot. Normally a left footer, had to concentrate on that, did a study in concentration, and got the ball onto the chest of Staker. Staker, back to Cox. So in this last term, what have they done? Kicked four goals, four goals, and the Eagles haven't kicked any. Now, and you look across the ground, and it's the Fremantle players who are running harder back now. I think the Dockers have run, uh, the Eagles have run themselves ragged. The margin was 73 points at three-quarter time, back to 47 at the moment. Glass, high ball, Judd is back on the ground, had it fisted away, Black could have been held without it, Shammer did well in a tight situation, and they'll run it away, Dodds hand pass over the top, this is Hazelby, pulls it back, Pavlich in midfield now, cruising past is Cook, it's one on one ahead, three groups of two, Farmer fingertips to it, and he's going to get a free kick, just the pace, pace of McFarlane worried he's... Yeah, and you're, yeah, you're by the arm. That's what he's saying. 
Isn't it amazing? Nothing encourages you to run more than a bit of room and a bit of latitude. I don't reckon the, the Dockers ran anywhere near hard enough because they were manned up so tightly. Yeah, totally agree. And now that they've got some space, all of a sudden they found some run. I reckon it says a fair bit about the psyche of this side. There's two free kicks there. There was one to McFarlane, one to Farmer. The first one is awarded. That's Jeff Farmer. Three kicks in this quarter. Fremantle five. The Eagles have had none. Perhaps it's because Frio are making the play. Farmer comes in, hits the post. Well, we're talking percentage now. And it'll be handy. And it was rather careless. Yep, they need everything at the moment. The Dockers, this game has gone. The four points all over. But the percentage will be all important. Two hard games coming up for them. And the last game against the uh, Port Power could well decide it. But, of course, if... Uh, if the bullies keep going the way they are, they could run past the two of them. Inside nine minutes left in his term. Well, Kerr, Gary, good luck trying to decide which uh, vote, who gets what. Hazelby. Well, they could put in team effort tonight. Had to, had to watch the footy then, Hazelby. Cox, got a wonderful season. Banfield has a rest. He's a, it's an unbelievable player, Banfield, too. He plays on the quickest small forwards. Beautiful mark taken by Staker. Got to the front. Must be 42. He's just come on here. He might run the length yeah. of the field if it gets to Hunter. He might get one here, Chick, in space. He's one of the missing players not to kick a goal yeah. tonight so far. Hunter's the other one. Gets it out to Kerr. Kerr just slams it on the boot up towards Lynch. Good effort by Parker again. Lynch over Ooh. the top of the ball and yeah. that good bullocking play there. Spills out Sampy now. Tries a bit of magic, didn't quite work. Shammer takes the ball over the line and out of bounds for a throw. A good second and third effort. Quentin Lynch for big fellow. Yeah. He uh, keeps going at it. Three kicks, as you can see. Very much for the West Coast Eagles. Most of them hurt. No question about that, given their appetite for the game tonight. Got to ball up. And look at this ball up here. Ben Cousins will sit on the back of the pack, and he'll try and get the first clear possession after the bounce down here. Hey, shepherding now for his teammates. Kerr once more charges in, runs across the 50, right on the boundary line, pulls it back, and that's a wonderful effort. He's just missed, I fancy, behind, but... Very close to stepping across the boundary line. The boundary umpire in perfect position behind him. And look at that blazing speed as he comes away. Meanwhile, after the kickoff, this is Dodd. Runs outside the defensive 50. Kicks to a contest on the wing. Chick, haven't seen a lot of him, but he's done what's required. That's right, yes. He's been like a symbol player. Several nice touches. As the ball goes across the boundary line, it will be thrown in. Three nice touches. Three. Three. Very Total. nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little work on the high hat. Just three. Very good ones. Well, absolutely. There's one behind to the West Coast Eagles in this final turn. Selwood's handball had a little bit too much on it for Fletcher. Oh, beautiful tackle. Great play. Grover in all sorts of trouble. Umpire gives a bit of mercy to the Fremantle Dockers. Accidental out of bounds, he said. Throw it in. Eagles fans enjoying the derby tonight. Well, Fletcher, beautiful play. Got it out to Selwood from 50. Selwood, Derm, is he one of your he many years? One we need. Oh. Oh, missed it. Oh, almost went to the second, uh, second in the list of all time. Different goal kickers in the one game. Still plenty of time, though. Maybe. Kicks off. This is Crowley. Crowley goes out very wide towards the boundary, and Pete liked his game. A late inclusion tonight. And he's been handy on occasions. He's provided some pace. Midway between the lines, half back and centre. Told to play on now. Goes for distance, kicking towards half forward. Sandlin's from behind, forced to punch away. Josh Carr across to Cook. 
This one will bounce pretty high in the air, one would assume. It did clear the first two. Farmer tried to deflect it across to the run from McFarlane, didn't succeed. Glass combines there with Hunter. Now an opportunity for Wirapunda. Pinpoint accuracy required, he's got it. And Green has got the football, the defensive side of right half back, comes in short again. Rowan Jones anxious to try and submit a spot in this club. Back tonight. After missing so many games, despite the fact he's the vice captain, here's Glass. Squares it to Chick. Whoops, slipping over was Cousins. Coming over the top there was Dodd. Cook missed the target intended for Bell. Wonderful by Cook. Wonderful second effort. Dodd, looping hand pass. Josh Carr dropped it. Taken by Selwood to Stendline. Hurried kick towards the ring. Held without it, surely. Fletcher will get the free. Hand it over. Let's go now. No, you could have grabbed it, Chad. Mark Sam. Fletcher looking to get the 50 metre penalty. No go, says the umpire. First free kick for the quarter for the Eagles. Good play by Green. Got the handball away. Jones again. Threw that one out with Punda. Under pressure. Green. Just the numbers too great. Long bomb to the goal square. CB's got the sit and the mark. Here's that stretch. Bit of pushing and shoving as well. But CB will go back and kick his second goal. And uh, just the numbers. Too good. Nice kick in from Casey Green. But Gary, they've adopted your favourite play tonight, the West Coast Eagles, long to the front of the square. Yeah, with great effect too. And when you've got CB and Cox resting down there, why would you do that? CB's had nine marks from point blank range, 15 metres directly in front for his second goal of the night, and the Eagles first of the quarter, and he delivers. been a terrific performance all round too. I know we go on about the midfield and how devastating they've been, but just even contributions across the board. They've worked really hard in their forward half. A lot of pressure when the ball's gone in there. Selwood's job on Hazelby, just fantastic. I thought Braun cleaned up Heath Black early. Black's had a bit of footy since, but when it was hot early, Braun was the man. Chick, not many touches, just beats his opponent. Well, up until three-quarter time, they had the scoreboard ticking over like a petrol pump. Things have slowed down a little bit. That's their first goal of this final quarter. But when it counted, the Eagles simply superb tonight. Judd close to best on the ground, but certainly a few vying for that honour. Slapped out of there by Cook. Fletcher, one of those, doing a little vying. And so too this man, Kerr, alongside the centre circles. Kicks inside the forward 50. Coming up to meet it was Morton, slipped over. Carr got it back. Opportunity for Bell. And Bell comes across the ground. His game being appraised. <laughs> Special comments. <laughs> Black. Anyone can do it. Comes out wide. <laughs> Schofield's got the footy. Walker has it now. Walker, looping hand pass. Here's Peak again. Certainly not out of his league in this company. Measures the kick. Well, well his head. It was well done indeed. So Almost unfold. demanding the run there from Walker. And Walker had the confidence to keep going. Confidence in the young man. He kicks from 52, trying to bend it back. Pavlik works in front. In fact, it's Hazelby who's taken the mark. He goes in and kicks the goal. His first. It, uh, Paul Hazelby's really strong overhead. I just wondered whether or not he could have been rested forward in place of Medhurst early in the piece. That would have had his measure early. Just wonder whether Medhurst off. Hazelby into that pocket, take a big mark, take Selwood down there, see how that panned out. That's where Chick sat on the bench for most of that time, and Chick would have been more than capable of going with him overhead and pace wise, had him covered. Try something. There's something. Well, our stats man Luke Tunnicliffe is working overtime to come up with Ooh, wonderful stats tonight. How about this one, boys? Mm -hmm. All 44 players have taken at least one mark tonight. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Oh, oh. Lose no 102 to 77, West Coast Eagles. And how many games has that happened in, in BFL, AFL history? Yeah, well, let's get him working on that How one. long have he got? <laughs> Two minutes, 23 seconds, Luke. Way you go. Go. Time starts now. Over the line and out of bounds. We'll have a throw in. 
left yeah, hand. So it's all over here. Deliver that stat to John Walsfold after the game. See what he thinks. Bush has taken the headphones off. No further interest in the game. Pretty perfect night for Johnny Walsfold. He's just got to get them all through without an injury in the last two Ooh. minutes and 15 seconds. Oh, as soon as you say that, Ed. That's all he'd be worried about. Well, CB has um, had a good night and he's made it hard for Gardner. So there's competition too for places, which is really important. We found some blood. What are you saying? And stay on passive bleeding. You can stay on. So, Cookie, get it, get it fixed up. Staying on. Car over the top, thumped it down around the corner. Kerr running into space. A chance for Fletcher. Can you beat the tackler? Good tackle by Grover, but of course, the extra man provided for the Eagles. That was Staker who kicked into the path of Jones, who pulls it back across the body and misses to the near side. The times we've seen where CB and the likes have outstretched their opponent. They're missing Hadrill, they're missing Polak would be that tall back pocket come centre half back to play on the six foot five, six foot six player. They've just been grossly undermanned. I mean they've been beaten up in the middle of the ground, they've been grossly undermanned near the goal square, defensive goal square, the Dockers. The last roll of the dice for the Dockers here to try and uh, get a little bit more percentage for the run home. The last two games of the season gonna be huge back here next Friday night for the Dockers and St Kilda. And they take on Port Adelaide. Throw in at half forward flank with a minute and a quarter left on the clock. Kerr has had 34 disposals tonight. That's a career best. And they've been rippers too. Longmuir's kick was smothered. Peak runs away. A likely tight. Hook fell over. Got the handball in the middle of the ground. Hazelby gets the ball working. Schofield's kick to Pavlich. Now Pav has kicked three goals before half time and then two behind since then so quite, could have quite easily finished with five goals for the night well, CB goes to the line now so he's going to have to get clear it or off of it onto the short lead yeah, yeah the breeze talk, have a look at the flags on top of the guy on the scoreboard he's got the advantage of a bit of breeze a bit of breeze you'll have to get 55 56 meters look at that he, that's the distance. Isn't it easily, but he's uh, pulled it as he has his last three kicks of goal to the left-hand side. And it's three goals, three for Matthew Pavlich tonight. A pretty good effort in an otherwise dismal night for the Fremantle Dockers. Nine seconds of this one. Schick in the back pocket. Fletcher. Out wide, stem line, running with a flight of it. Ample time to... Assess the options and pop it over the top. Selwood has been very good. Spots a man offering a lead to the pocket. That was Hunter. All well knocked away by Mundy. Boundary throw in. So John Worsvold becomes the first of these two coaches who started in the same season to win two Western Derbies in the one season. And they've done it in convincing style. Won the first one by eight points back in round three. And tonight they've simply dominated the scoreboard flatters the Dockers. Well done to the West Coast Eagles. They make it 20 on the trot. And Subiaco Oval. 19-14, 128 to 12-8-80. So the margin 48 points after it was 73 at three-quarter time. But as I say, that really is a little misleading. The sting was well and truly out of the game. And when it counted, the Eagles quite emphatic. Well, in the end, uh, Dennis, though, that uh, fight back did find them an extra 2.3%. So 102.3 for the uh, Fremantle Dockers. They had got down to about 100 even at three-quarter time. And uh, that will count, no doubt about that, in the run home over the next fortnight, particularly with the uh, Western Bulldogs.